Fitness and health tech tools work very, very well, only if you can connect them to behaviors. Remember, at the end of the day, it's all about your behaviors. Don't rely on these tools. Use them like training wheels. Learn about your behaviors. Learn about your cravings. Why do you do what you do? Why do you avoid what you avoid? Learn those things and develop a long-term relationship that lasts forever with health and fitness. Yeah. I'm curious about your guys' personal journey with these things because <clears throat> we've talked about them uh, early on, especially when we were, were doing the show, when I was going through the whole process, uh, dieting and stuff like that. I was obviously, I was probably the biggest one on them as far as like pro, mm -hmm. all the tech tools. Mm -hmm. I know you guys kind of don't really, you guys off on, on, user and whatever. Have you, do you feel like your opinion about them has changed multiple times? Have you felt like since day one, you've been consistent about how you feel about them? Like what is your, what is your um, personal journey been like with using them both for yourself and for clients? Yeah, I think, I think for me, I was always like hopeful of the next one that would come out or like, I just, I had a lot of like um, excitement towards something that like could give me more insight, uh, whether it was for myself or my clients. I, th I think over the years I've found that the most value I've received from them has been from me as a coach interpreting the data and then sort of just incorporating things to, to steer behavior that way, as opposed to them like getting really involved with the tech themselves. Like that always seemed to peter out uh, or would overcomplicate things for them. Yeah. it's I, I look at it like um, like personal trainers or coaches, right? There's always those clients, and a lot. Actually, it's a lot of people when they first hire a trainer. What do they say? Just tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Just right. tell me what to do, and I'll do it. Right. And we know that that doesn't work. In the short term, it could work, right? Because the client shows up and just does what you say, and you give them a meal plan, and they just eat what you tell them. But it never, it never lasts because the person uh, doesn't understand why they're doing what they're doing, and they don't develop the relationship themselves. They're just reliant upon someone else telling them what to do, and that's just not a good long term approach. Well, that's how, that was my opinion of tech. Uh, you know, things that will tell you your macros and your calories and your calorie burn and your steps. If you're not using it to develop kind of this long-term strategy, then it's no different than hiring a trainer and just having the trainer tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. I used to do that, by the way, as a mm -hmm. trainer. I think all of us did, right? Where you just tell the client what to do and you expect them to follow it. Right. I didn't become effective until I could, you know... I guess, lead the client and show them how to develop these relationships themselves. That's when I became more successful. Um, so my my opinion of tech and fitness, and if you go back and listen to the early days of the podcast, we would talk about them. I was always very pessimistic. It's like, it's not going to change anything uh, to have these new tools. Now it's a lot more optimistic because now we have companies like NutriSense that combines, you know, CGMs, for example, with coaches that will then connect the dots for you and help you identify, oh, when my blood sugar does this or when it goes down this quickly, I feel like this and this makes me have more cravings or this is when I feel more irritable or this is when my energy levels uh, Before drop. Before you go to bed and then it spikes in the middle of the night yeah. and what all that means. Yeah, my yeah. sleep isn't as good when I do this. And then people start, so they have someone there to help them connect all these dots. But otherwise it's just, um, you're just following direction and that's not, I mean, you, you live in the world. I mean, I don't see, I don't, I don't see how anybody's going to want to ever just follow direction forever. Plus here's the problem with that is when you just follow direction, you actually ignore your body's signals. Mm -hmm. So like if I gave someone a meal plan back in the day and they're like, I'm just going to do what you tell me. And something on that meal plan doesn't work with them. People ignore it. I remember, I'll never forget this. I had somebody, and this is when I really started to put this together. This was probably five or six years into my career. Somebody came to me and said, you know, I've been doing keto now for, for like three months. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, when does the keto flu go away and, and the constipation? Like, when does that fix? And I'm like, three months? Why haven't you stopped? <laughs> like, why? Well, I know it's supposed to be good for me. And I read all these articles yeah. and, you know, trainers are saying it's a good thing. And, and you know, this is back when it was like a, a big deal. I'm like, well, you're, you're ignoring your body's telling you it's not working for you. You're ignoring it because you're just following directions. Yeah. And there's, there's, that's not a long-term approach. There's no way that'll last long-term. So I absolutely lo love tech tools. Most all of them, I should say. Um, personally, I, I think that it really does depend on the person and, and if they have coaching. Like, for example, NutriSense is someone that I actually wouldn't have liked that tool if it wasn't paired with coaching. Totally. Mm -hmm. I think the the layer, how, how deep it goes as far as 
b- spiking blood sugar levels and like getting the client to understand that level of it and like how that connects to behavior is an even deeper level than just understanding how often you walk and step sure. and how many average calories does your body naturally like to me that's like the first entry level to that is these you know fitbit type of tools nutrisense i would say is an even deeper level so if it didn't have a coach paired with it i actually wouldn't be that big of a fan of it i think most people would interpret the the data wrong or wouldn't know how to connect it, what they should connect it to and wouldn't know even what to do with that information. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have even been that big of a fan for the average person. But all in all, I think the tools are incredible. The mistake though is the people that tend to like them are tend to be the wrong people, right? It seems to be the people that are the most data driven and like geek Uber out competitive. Yeah. yeah. I, I literally just, had they this, wouldn't need the tools. Yeah, They're going to be consistent. Anyway. It's funny. You, you actually, this was your fitness tip today because I obviously I don't know until you do it. Um, and I think two days ago I was in my DMS back and forth. This is one of our long-term listeners. Um, and you know, she follows several of our programs and she's got a, she's got a coach that she's working with right now. She used our macro calculator. She's using the Fitbit and she's like, you know, Adam, I'm, I'm, I just really need some, some direction. I feel frustrated. I'm not seeing these results. And um, my coach is having me put on this. But then when I go to your macro calculator, it says this. My Fitbit says I should be doing it. I'm like, okay, see, this is, this is where it gets bad. Yep. Is you are comparing all of them and you want one of them to be the right one so you can say the other ones suck and that's the most accurate thing. And it's just like, well, that's just a roll of the dice, which one's going to be perfect for you as far as lining up. What you really need to do is we just need to figure out what your maintenance caloric level is and whether you use our macro calculator to give you a starting point or you use your Fitbit to be your starting point or you use your coach, which is what I recommended. I said, if you got a good coach and you feel confident about who you hired, they are going to have better insight with you on this than any of these, even our great macro calculator. Because if I were to take on a client that had all these tools, I would actually say, I don't want you to use these for now as far as like holding on to what they say. You can wear it and you can pay attention to it, but uh, the advice it's giving you I, is irrelevant to us right now. What we first need to do is track your calories and see where we and figure out maintenance for ourselves. Meaning let's start at a calorie intake that you think is your maintenance or what maybe close to one of these numbers are giving us. And then the goal is for us just to see your body not fluctuate in weight. We want to just maintain off of your normal daily habits. And if your normal daily habits are you don't ever work out, you sit on the couch all day, I actually kind of want you to do that for the first week or two while we're just figuring out your caloric maintenance. And then from there, we adjust. Now, if you're using a Fitbit or a tool like that and you know, we do it together and we find out your caloric maintenance is 2000 calories, but the tool said 2,400 calories. It doesn't ma- That number doesn't matter to me. What matters is that we know it's 2000. Now you can use that tool. If that tool reads 2,700, uh, 1,800, the up and down of it, as long as it's relative to the number that we, we right. figured out, that's, that's our home base. And where that tool is incredible is they are really accurate with the the how it the, how it goes the variance of it going up and down as far as how many calories you're burning how many steps you look that at you're the doing. trends yes and so we want to watch the trends and, of and that. you want to compare that to what's happening how do I feel what you know why is it trending in particular like I'll, I'll use a very simple example a step counter step counters have been around for a long time mm-hmm. this is like basic fitness tech this is as basic as it gets. Now, here's where step counters uh, are valuable. You you look at your steps. You see how much you move, how much you don't move. And then you connect it to how you feel. What does that look like on a normal day? Not what does it look like when I schedule long walks, yeah. but rather, Weekdays wow. Weekdays versus weekends. Like yes. The trends are. And, oh, man, I have way more energy when I'm around here. Or, oh, I'm too fatigued when my steps go above this. And then I can move away from the step counter and start to kind of live. Because here's the deal. Like, if... Fitness is a stress. If eating right is a stress, you're not going to maintain it long term. Mm-hmm. If it's how you live, because you enjoy to live that way, um, and you've identified all the benefits that it's, you know, made for you—not just the scale, weight, in in the mirror, but all the other things—then uh, it's something that you're going to want to do for the rest of your life. So, you know, your step <laughs> counter can say ten thousand steps. Okay, that's great. And so every day you can look at it. Oh, did I hit ten thousand steps? Did I not? But what's better is if you say, "Wow, I noticed that when I." park further away from the mall. I noticed that when I use the bathroom, that's on the second floor. 
I noticed that when I stand up to, you know, to do chores versus sitting down to fold laundry, I tend to hit, and then I, and then I feel good and I feel great when I do that. Or, ooh, those steps are too much. Actually, my energy is a little low, maybe connected to my diet. It's a learning process. It's a journey. But if you don't do that and you just look at the, t the tech and you just follow what the tech says, you're going to fail 100%. And they have not contributed. This is why all this tech that didn't exist when we were trainers, this is why it still hasn't contributed to a higher success rate. Yeah, because it doesn't necessarily change behaviors. It doesn't change yeah. behaviors. Yeah, if it doesn't change behaviors, then you could have all the data. You know, it's funny you're talking about the the steps. The kind of my my arc with this whole process of the the tech the tools, like I totally geeked out on it originally. I I was definitely somebody who was hung up on all the different data of my what my sleep was saying, my scores were saying, how many calories that workout burnt versus this one. At the end, like if you were to see like how I was coaching, uh, like my last client that I actually coached like to to diet in the uh, before we did this, and I actually use steps more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I find that the most once I I manually find their their calorie maintenance level, right, and I know about how many steps they were taking per day, right, their activity level, I can manage them basically through their steps, what I need their body to burn per se. Mm -hmm. And I use that more than anything else. Mm -hmm. That that to me, I find like the intensity of a workout more than the other, like that, that there's going to be this kind of like ebb and flow of that. It's like irrelevant. Right. But the difference between somebody sitting on the couch all day and not yeah. moving any steps versus Just 10 overall activity. It's it, a, yeah. It's a good insight in that direction. And right? it's easier to coach and manage to. Yeah. I found it so much easier to tell a client like Hey, right now you average about 5,500 steps a day. Our goal next week is to make sure you hit 7,000 every day. Like that's simple. Yeah, and mm -hmm. the way to get there is just be mindful of it. Walk more. And that little bit of coaching right there, I know ramps up their total calorie burn for the day and the total for the week. And that would fluctuate the, what I want. Well, them look, to do. The, the bottom line is if this is something that you're, you plan on doing for the rest of your life, then you, it needs to become how you live your life. So in other words, it's it's not, ooh, I got to schedule time to go to the gym. Ooh, I got to do this thing. I got to restrict my food. It's This is just how I live, and it's healthy, mm -hmm. and I feel good, and it's just it's a non-stressful way to live. Otherwise, it's going to be this up and down struggle all the time, and this is why, again, the fail rate is the same. We have all this tech. We have all this information. Look, when we were trainers, if I want to know how many calories and grams of proteins, fats, and carbs are in foods, I had to go get my Calorie King book. You guys remember that? Yeah, I had yeah, to go yeah. get a big book <laughs> and scroll and, and look. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all this. Now we have all this, this, this incredible access to information. The fail rate is the same. Yeah. It is not for lack of information. That's not the reason why we're where we are. It's the same reason why we were, you know, in the late nineties when I became a trainer versus today. It's the same. It's that people are not, we're, we're trainers, coaches, the fitness industry, and people don't understand that this is a, it's a journey and you have to develop this relationship with these things. Otherwise it'll never work unless you're one of the few people that are fitness fanatics and you love it. But if yeah. you're a fitness fanatic, you know, you probably work well, in the fitness industry. Yeah. And I, I also look at it uh, from this perspective. It's like, if it's bringing insight into like signals and things that your body's trying to convey to you, but you're not aware, you're not aware of how to, to pick up on that. So for instance, like if it's the step count thing, like I'm just kind of oblivious that I'm not really that active on these days or, right. you know, or if it's like HRV and it's like, well, maybe I probably shouldn't go as intense today. I'm listening to my body and realizing maybe I'm not fully recovered and it's kind of bringing me in some insight there. Or, you know, or, or it's the spike blood sugar thing. Or if I do this in the morning instead of what I was doing previous, now I have a different operating system to go off of. And so it's like you got to use that. And, and too, the calorie thing, it's you have to do the work initially to be able to have a basis to kind right. of go off of. So I, if you can look at it like that as a tool, it's like, okay, if this is actually like – bringing something valuable into the way my process and I can improve my process, but then evolve past and use my own body signals to take over. That's the, the best case scenario. What you're highlighting was one of the, and this is probably why I'm, I'm, I like the, t the tools so much because it was one of the most pivotal uh, things that ever happened in my fitness journey. And I've shared it a long time ago on the podcast. We haven't talked about it in a long time, but I remember when I was a trainer and I, w I struggled to get like super shredded lean. I could never 
break this. I could I could get pretty good, like 10% or so. Like I think 9% was the leanest I'd gotten at that point in my career. And that, that's me like trying. And like, this doesn't add up to me. Like I am absolutely perfect on the diet during the week. I mean, I'm prepping like crazy. I'm consistent with my training. Back then that's why I'm training like five, six days a week. Saturday and Sunday would be the days that I would say, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm off. I wouldn't be like off the rails though. I was just off. I wouldn't train that day if I were to have some pizza or enjoy yeah. some junk food or ice cream or candy on the day. I would allow it in there. But I'm like in my head, I'm going, yeah, that's a few hundred calories here. And that's, yeah. not a, that's not like, that's not enough to make me fat or that's not enough to keep me from losing a percent when I'm so perfect the rest of the week. It wasn't until the, the body bug came out when I tracked that, it blew my mind. It blew my mind that just working all day as a trainer, the total amount of calories my body was burning because I'm re-racking weights, I'm training clients 10 hours a day. And then the difference on Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, slept in. I would not get up until about 10 o'clock or so, you know, mosey around, do my thing for the day. And then the amount, I mean, we're talking about a 2000 plus calorie burn difference mm. in each day. So four thousand. I mean, plus you're eating plus more calories. If I was going to make a bad choice, even though, like I said, it wasn't like so crazy. you were at maintenance without realizing. It. Yes, yep, I know. And so it was just enough to negate all the the deficit and crazy work I was doing during the week, and it just it, I couldn't make that connection until I saw the data, and it it just shifted. And which is where yeah. the thing came from, which you've heard on this podcast me say a bunch of times: win the weekend. Like if I could just win the weekend, I knew I was good because I moved so much during the week completely that I now then broke through that. Now I could get down to 6% so, body so, fat. So yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. And, it, and mm -hmm. you know, along the, I remember when my clients first started using that, uh, the, the devices like that, it would, it helped me as a trainer because I would look at their, I remember the fir very, their, very first their grocery time. shopping well, was burning more than dude, your workouts. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Washing that dishes, blew my mind too. Yard work. Yes. Yeah. I remember like I had my, um, the calories. first woman, the first person that I had use one was this woman. And I remember when, cause you were able to, you'd upload it to your computer and then you'd see their activity. Mm -hmm. And I looked, I'm like, what did you do on Saturday? Oh yeah. my God. She's like, nothing. I'm like, yeah. what do you mean nothing? She's like, well, I did some gardening. Went to the flea market. Yeah, yeah. we washed yeah. the car. I went grocery, you know, I went to the mall. I'm like, oh my God, you burned way more calories on Saturday than you did during the week. And then I looked at the days that she worked with me. So she trained with me Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And I could, and it would show you on the graph. You would see the activity level spike for the workout. Yeah. And then the rest of the day was nothing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, and so I'm piecing. I'm like, oh my God, that's true because she works a desk job. So yeah. she comes in, works out me, yeah, and then tough. nothing all day long. So it helped me coach her much more effectively. You know? I had the same yeah. epiphany too. It blew my mind that, and this was back in the days when we were probably all training our clients similar, right? Where it was like crushing them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you were crushing them. They would, they would go limping out of the gym or just drenched <laughs> in sweat. That was considered a successful workout. And I'm looking at the days that I trained her and she was burning like half the calories she was on a day she would consider I didn't do anything. Yeah, I went to yeah. the farmer's market. Yeah, but yeah, I didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. It was grocery shopping, cleaning my house for the weekend or what that. And it was like, oh my God, here we are trying to figure yeah. out this like calorie deficit. I'm so fixated on our workout being intense so she burns more calories so we lose weight. Yet if she just has a Saturday a couple more times during the week, like we're going to make a huge deficit with minimal effort without training hard like that, that shifted the way Isn't I was. That funny? There's so many people still stuck in that still. mindset of like, I got to burn this off. And it's like, you know, you, you're giving yourself an hour of intense where you're not even going to come close. Look, well, this you, is why they actually say yeah. today that somebody who considers themselves highly active is actually like somebody who trains, five to six days a week. An hour. An hour, intense. But they work a traditional intense, desk job. Are still considered sedentary. 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 Yeah. Because yeah. that one hour ain't shit. You could, I mean, I don't care if you, you want do that the hardest to like CrossFit just... workout you've ever done, you're going to burn seven yeah. to 900 calories at best. No, you're lucky. Even yeah. then, yeah. Like no, I mean, that's like, yeah. I'm talking about at best. Like, there's a puke workout, 700 to 900 calories, and you're a big person. Like, it ain't happening. No. Like, you're like, just by being, a, then compare that to someone who has a job where they're just, active and Look, they the walk tool, around all day like you, you won't even come close the to tools the are good for awareness it's what you do with the awareness though that makes it yes. effective yes. awareness by itself is nothing you got to do something with it so I, i've said yeah. this before but i think it's appropriate now 
how we learn goes through four general stages. And the first one is you're, you're just unconsciously incompetent. So you mm -hmm. don't know what you don't know. And this is where you start out. You just don't know where you, what you don't know. But then you quickly move into, oh, like now I'm aware of what I don't know. Then the next stage is now I'm aware of uh, what I know. So that means I have to consciously, it's like watching a kid learn how to walk, right? Once they learn how to walk, they have to consciously think about every step. And you could tell when they're walking, they have to pay attention, but that's not where you want to end up. You want to end up in this kind of uh, unconscious competence where walking is natural. I don't think about Subconscious walking. Subconscious kind of takes over. Yeah. I, I, when I walk, I don't think about every single step. I just, I just walk. Well, this is where you eventually want to get to if this is something you want to maintain for the rest of your life, where this is just, like I said earlier, this is just how you live. And these tools can be a piece of that. They can be a part of the puzzle, but they are not the whole puzzle. They yeah. are not the, yeah. the solution. They're not the answer and by themselves without the right person probably coaching and explaining to you, they could be absolutely worthless. You know, I don't remember who it was, somebody that was a friend of ours, some online trainer coach buddy of ours that was kind of clowning on glucose monitors. I don't remember. Do you remember who it was? I don't remember who it was. Oh, no, I don't remember. Remember. It was a friend of ours, yeah. right? I mean, we don't, agree, we don't agree with everybody that's a friend of ours in the fitness space, obviously. Uh, and they were, you know, basically saying how worthless they are and so pointless. And it's like, unless you're a diabetic, this is such a waste of money. And it's like, okay, yeah, at face value, you're, you, you could be right about that, but not if you learn to attach it to the behaviors. If you think that eating certain foods that spike or crash blood sugar does not change your behaviors and choices that you make food wise, yeah. you don't know shit as a trainer. It absolutely does. And if you as a client can learn to make those connections, it is a simple like, oh, I shouldn't eat that because I know how I'm going to feel because of how it's going to make me crash like that. Like that's the value in yeah. it. It's not, oh, wear what this kind thing. Of cravings yeah, wear this produce. ugly ass thing yeah. on the back of your tricep and it's guaranteed to make you lose 15 pounds of fat. Like, no, it ain't it ain't like that at all. But if you can learn to connect it to behaviors based off of and that's what how, the coaching does. That's and yeah. that's yeah. where the money is at. And by the that. way, that's that's it's super valuable when you have those occasional and all of us have them, those foods that spike uh blood sugar that don't wouldn't traditionally be labeled as blood, you know, sugar spiking foods. Mm -hmm. How does this happen? Well, you have immune responses to certain foods. This is what food intolerances are. So you could very well eat an avocado, which has zero carbohydrates, zero sugar. It's got fiber and fat for all intents and purposes. You should get zero, you know, spike and crash and blood sugar because there's none in there. But if you have an intolerance to avocados that you're not aware of and you eat it, the way that your body often responds to an intolerance is it mounts a low level immune response. And that typically is a stress on the body. The body releases sugar from your liver. So now an avocado, if this is you spikes your blood sugar, you would have never known this. It would have been hard for you to connect the dots. You would have eaten the avocado and be like, yeah, you know, and, and not connected the crappy feeling afterwards. Cause you're, it's an avocado. That's not going to affect my blood sugar. But if you use the device like a CGM and you work with a coach, they would tell you at two o'clock, you got this real crazy and you're like, but well, that's weird because I'm just eating avocados. Like, oh, really? Let's let's keep an eye on that because you may have an intolerance and that definitely will cause a spike in blood sugar, even though it has no sugar. Listen, there's a way to do this manually too. I mean, if you really want to put the work in for those people that are like, oh my God. So this is how I used to do it. Yeah. You can literally do a food diary if you really have the discipline to, to do, do this. this. Yeah. And that's why, again, I like these types of tools because like, let's be honest, yeah. very few people easier. Will, will do this. But yeah, you could sit down and like, Log what you eat, log afterwards, how full do you feel? How do, do you have any bloat from that? Do you, how's your stool feel? How's your energy feel? Did you notice any cravings? So if, yeah, put all those things, score it one to five and start logging every single thing you eat. And then you could probably figure this out without that tool. I think you can totally do that and do a pretty good job at that, but you got to be willing to put all that work in and be consistent with that to probably get a really good objective view of what's going on with you. But that's really what that what you're yeah. getting out of out of a device like that that yeah, I think yeah. is really valuable. Yeah, and that's yeah. hard, by the way. What you're saying is really hard. It I used is. to do that with clients. Yeah. yeah, I literally had a form that they would fill out, and I'd have them do this whole thing before and a, before, during, and after meals mm. type of deal. And mm. it was a long process, man. It was a long process. So I wish I had a CGM back then. That would have uh, made things same. a lot. Yeah, it would it would have made things you know a lot easier. Today's workout program giveaway is Maps Power Lift. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. We're also running a sale. 
Maps, Symmetry, and the RGB bundle are both 50% off. That's a huge discount. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, so uh, so I have to move. I have to move out of my house. Yeah. How crazy. From old. Yeah. yeah, dude. So uh, this is a kind of a crazy I want to point out, situation. this is when your, um, what's it called? When your uh, hypochondriac. Yeah. Pays off. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. His bloodhound knows. And for sure, like, for sure, I would have been living yeah. there, probably breathing that shit in for another five years. It wasn't years. me, actually. <laughs> so what it was is, so my two and a half year old has had these kind of on, off again, kind of like mild autoimmune type issues, like some skin issues, some gut issues. We couldn't really get to the the, the root of it. Uh, we have been we were working with Dr. Becky Campbell. She's a functional medicine practitioner. And it was just, we just couldn't really figure it out. We could somewhat manage it with diet, but it didn't make sense as to why his body was being so sensitive. And so um, Dr. Becky Campbell suggested that we do a urine test to test for mold. Because if certain types of mold, and if you're sensitive to mold, or if you're sensitive to mold, it could definitely cause um, issues. It can cause issues. It can overwhelm your body's ability to deal with histamine, it can cause stress uh, reactions or immune reactions. So we tested our urine and it came back positive for mold. Now we're like, was it in the previous house or is it in this house? We didn't know. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this whole, because mold test, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you get like a legit company. It's probably expensive. Oh, it's thousands of dollars. Did you guys have to pay that out of your own pocket? Well, once we, once we found out that there was mold and the kind of mold that you don't want, then our landlord compensated us through rent. Okay, yeah. good. Because I was wondering about that. But if that. it came back negative, it's on me. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what are you going to do? Tell the landlord, hey, I tested for mold, came back negative. Can you pay for it? They'll be like, no. You know? Yeah, yeah. But so I went and I paid this company and it was very, very thorough. Very thorough mold test. They came back and it was through the HVAC unit. Oh. So the arteries of the house. I was going to ask, yeah, if it was so, there, the walls or well, something. Well, yeah. So you turn on, the, well, it blows it everywhere. Everywhere. It just blows it throughout the whole house. And then anywhere there's moisture, the mold will settle. And then you got some mold there. But they found- Brutal. Yeah, they found stuff all over the place. So I'm so, I was so mad. I'm like, oh, I hate moving. I hate dealing with this. Yeah. But we got we to move. So. I mean, I'm excited for you because I like the new place. I mean, I know, yeah. I, trust me, nobody knows how much moving sucks probably more than me. Because I think since we've been together, I think I definitely have yeah. moved the most. Have you moved more than me? Yeah. How many times mm -hmm. have you moved now? Since we've been, uh, Scarlett, Bernetti- Marina, Morgan yeah, Hill. Yeah. Wow, four. four. Yeah, okay. that's just since we've all been together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, wow, yeah. So, yeah, that's a yeah. lot. Yeah, no, I've been I've been moving quite yeah. a bit. Um, so pain in the butt. Those things like the the air dock that we have in here. Mm -hmm. How um how effective are they? Do you know Doug? What the they air see? purifiers? Yeah, like, very. Because I think I've read before like ninety nine point nine percent of all mold or things like that. Those things are supposed to not that I would suggest you stay there. It and, helps, and work but it. if you don't get rid of the source, still you're yeah, gonna get some. Be a constant battle. Yeah. There. So I did get a bunch of purifiers. Every room now has one in there because we're still there trying to figure out how we're gonna you know because we found a new place and we're gonna start the moving process. So I do have purifiers running twenty four seven throughout the house. Yeah. But it's crazy because, and we'll know, like once we move, we'll know if that was the really- right, if it clears up. If it clears up. And then yeah. my oldest son who went off to college, mysteriously, all of his gut issues disappeared. Mm. So how, you know how annoyed I am that wow. it could have potentially been causing stuff like that for him? Bro. Wow. I'm so, I'll be, I'm so mad. But ugh, it's a lot, dude. The landlord's going to have to like gut. The HVAC, they're going to have to go through walls and do all that shit. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. And when you start looking this up, you'll hear horror stories of people who, um, doctor, so Dr. Becky Campbell herself, she dealt with this herself. She thought this, you want to hear her story? It's crazy. She thought she had, she couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. She kept having all these crazy symptoms. Traditional mold sensitivity symptoms look like upper respiratory type issues that mm -hmm. keep reoccurring. But some people get weird stuff like, anxiety, depression, being lethargic. Like hmm. you think you're dying. Like what the hell's wrong with me, right? She was having all these weird symptoms. She thought she had breast implant illness, uh, which if you look that up, now that's yeah. not a confirmed thing, but lots of people say that it exists. She got her implants removed while she was in the hospital, mysteriously started feeling better. So she's like, oh, it's totally the implants. Moves back home, symptoms come back. She's uh, like, what the f hell? 
did a thorough analysis and sure enough found mold in her house. Brutal. And that was what the problem was. Oh, wow. It was Brutal. the mold. I know. Ah, that's crazy. Man. I know. And it's, it's weird because there's no standard. Mm -hmm. There's no real standard for what is like considered bad or good or, or whatever. And again, these tests are, I mean, if you have a, a decent sized house and you do a full on test, it's going to cost you a, it can cost you five, six, seven thousand dollars or more. I'm sure most yeah. people live with it and don't really get, you know, as bad as symptoms as to to trigger like a response. Right. right. Like you just have these low level just low level symptoms and, and have no idea. Like it's it's everywhere. Oh, it's so crazy. Yeah. So I wanted to I wanted to call Doug out uh on this because he was so undercover about this what do you do now uh i was i was talking to, to <laughs> Bree. Confused he looks. i know right he's like he's oh, waiting. what the just fuck is adam gonna sell me out right now it's just you know he's sweating bullets right now <laughs> 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 let's drag it out i'm gonna drag it out a little bit right just just hang in there dude talk to your daughter she told me you were doing something oh, oh, oh what are you doing what doug? you right. doing dougie you you take a calligraphy class oh wow yeah so uh no she told me that she already called me out on that oh she um, okay good so she gave the heads up. No, I, I had the heads up on that. So one of the things I was very interested in doing when I went to Japan was calligraphy, the Japanese calligraphy. I, I think it's beautiful. It's, you know, black ink on essentially white paper or yeah. off white paper. You have and these I, special pens too, right? Yeah, it's a brush. Okay. You use a brush. He's like oh. literally taking a class. So I was going to take a class when I went to Japan, but I didn't have time. So I happened to come back to the US and I thought, well, I'm going to look for a class. And there was one locally that was being held at a Japanese art store. And it just so happened to be a teacher and he's actually lives in Japan. He comes out every other month or so and he teaches a class. So he's actually, tr he travels the world, teaches at universities and he's quite a well-known artist. Wow. So I had to come Sweet. all the way back here to <laughs> actually funny. get one of the top guys to, to learn from. So I took one class, there. I think it was in August. Then yeah. he came back here. It's uh, no, it was in July, and then in September. So it was like a, a two month. So yeah, I wanted. I didn't want to miss the class. So I went and took it. So, so it's you, callig calligraphy, but it's it's Japanese characters. Japanese characters. So it's a brush. It's not like a quilled pen. No, it's yeah. yeah it's an actual like a paintbrush with a like a. You sharpen the tip and you wow. dip it in black ink. That's cool. But there's such a. Uh, technique around it. Of course. Yeah. I mean, the way you hold the brush, the way you sit, all the supplies that go Wait, along with it. Wait, what do you mean the it. way you sit? You have to sit particularly? Well, you sit up straight and then the brush, you hold it vertically. You mm. don't bend the brush, you hold it vertically. Yeah, and the, see example right there. Do you remember when that was all the rage for tattoos when people were doing that? And they I, still uh, do it. Uh, My buddy beat me to it and he put it on his shoulder before I, I was supposed to Have you that. ever seen those horror stories where people yeah, 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 like they mean something else? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're, yeah, they're Japanese the friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like like that yeah. yeah, says yeah. tuna roll. That's not what you think it says. Uh, I wonder yeah. how many people got fucked with. with like, uh, a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You a think so? You think so? I've heard, I've read stories where people, yeah, and their friend who reads that, yeah, I was like, oh, you know what that says on your shoulder? You know? No, what does it say? You know? Honestly, you might be going on this like Steve Jobs uh, sort of, you, you know how he got into calligraphy and then he had this epiphany and that's kind of oh, like really? what led yeah. him to I thought it was an iPhone. Acid. Well, yeah, that too. I okay. mean, he did all that, I think in India. Are you dropping acid Himalayas? too? Though? Yeah. No, no, not yet. Are you on, you're on a journey, Doug. I may, may try it later, but right. <laughs> no, it's very meditative. Yeah. For sure. You have to be very focused. And, you have to uh, be very present. Present, yeah. Do you think, do you guys think Doug doesn't tell us stuff? because he's secretive or do you think it's because we talk so much he doesn't have a chance that okay <laughs> <laughs> i think Katri katrina we were is it funny that the reason why i brought it up was katrina and i had a night to ourselves and we were we were, we were talking about we were like had a moment of like just being grateful and i was sharing about you know my partnership with you guys and how crazy it's been it's almost nine years that we've been doing this all together and it's so wild that how how well we've all stayed connected mm -hmm. and just the ability for you know four leader personalities to be able to get through something like that and she was making the comment of like the 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 thing that ties us is that we're all like these dorks. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's her. Yeah, her glue. She yeah. thinks it's keeping she's us like, together. What it is, is that you guys are like super dorks. <laughs> and she was like, and she's doing it like compliment at the same time. Like, I love that about you though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay. I like that. She <laughs> says, 
She goes, yeah, you each all have like your your little do. dork, your dorky well, things that you that. guys are all into and you just yeah. kind of privately do it. Yeah. So I would throw it in that category of like, we have like this little, we all have our little geeky things that we geek out on and then we don't need to share it. It's like, uh, it's not like a bragging thing. You know? It's like, a, yeah. you know, I'm into this. I don't need anybody else to be into it. You know what I'm saying? I do it for me. I don't do it for anybody else. And so- totally. I think that we all kind of have a little bit of that. Yeah, but us. you tend to tell, you tend to share. I do the same thing. I'll come and tell you guys what's going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I unless it's a challenge and nobody knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> until shit explodes. Maybe not. <laughs> I mean, Doug was also, you know, up in the city too, going to like some trade show for the samurai swords this weekend too. Oh, so it wasn't a trade store it's a oh. show. It's a, a club, actually, a Japanese oh, so, oh, even sword more nerdy. club. You go, you, very, you, very nerdy. Oh wow. wow. Yeah. So did you join the club or did you just check it I'm out? I'm going to join the club. Oh, I don't wow. know how often I'll actually go to it do you have to do something to join yeah it? is there any sort of like hazing or anything like nah, that yeah, there's yeah. no ritual or anything a full like back that. tattoo or anything yeah no but these guys <laughs> i had no Bro. idea yeah yeah I'm gonna, we please? Oh, that would be such a cool i want to make doug, doug with a big, all dude. huge yeah. like fucking that would tiger be, on his that back that would be very doug <laughs> going to be rad no what Wait, did you get just has full <laughs> sleeves we had no idea fucking massive you guys thought of tiger he just takes his clothes oh my god i knew it <laughs> now are they are they super dorks about it and they show up dressed up like they samurai? don't okay. they do not, not like however not like tales? justin star wars fans no <laughs> hey they're awesome dude don't don't clown on my star wars guys but i gotta say i was shocked at the level of knowledge these guys have so i bought two swords when i was in japan and honestly i bought them not knowing a lot about them so i thought well i'm going to take my swords up there and have these guys look at it and they, they, they take it off. So when you take the handle off, there's a, an engraving on the actual sword of the swordsmith. And I have one sword that was like 16th century, uh, you know, made. That's what I was told anyway. Wow. And so uh, the guys looked at it. And, and these guys don't actually speak Japanese, but they know the sword maker so okay. well. They go, oh, yeah, we know Tadayoshi was the name of the sword maker wow. who made mine. And he was in the 16th century. He's made a lot of swords. He's well known, et, et cetera, et cetera. What was so, the secret of the Japanese steel and the swords? Because they were doing this back when how they folded it or something. Like it's that? also it's also the heat and the and, and something else because yeah. they they were making steel that I mean back then they were using iron in other parts of the world. This th their swords were harder and sharper than anything else. Isn't it? Yeah, the way they fold them or something. Lighter too. Well, yeah, I there's to there's obviously some type of process. I'm not well versed on that yeah. uh, something i have to learn i i what i learned when That's i went to this club, club <laughs> all i know is, is what from i don't know anything yeah. and there is so much to know yeah there's a guy there he's lived 43 years in japan and he is actually a, a, a true expert on japanese swords uh he's an american guy and he's actually written a book on it and just like talking about all the periods and who the makers are and the schools that made the swords and there's such a such a history to so it. So this is the this is the nerdy part cool. that she was referring to about yeah. us is that yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter what it is yeah. that if we are one of us is into a thing we're into it we're into yeah, it exactly. like, and that's like me like I've been into if I'm once I get into something like that it's like I obsess over it. I didn't yeah, sleep totally. last night I was up till two in the morning watching video I'm constantly like yeah. doing research and homework a lot of times too Katrina will ask me like. What are you? Are you gonna go buy this or do that? And I'm like, no, I'm I'm just doing my homework right now. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna go make a purchase or something like that until I feel confident, like I know what it is I want and it's a good deal. And it's like, so yeah, we I think we all kind of obsess over something. I find like that, that. Yeah. I love the, I love the same. I mean, I love Japanese cultural. I'm not not as into it as Doug is, but I could totally get into it. But it's fascinating to me because you think about it. If you in, you know 16th century, if your sword broke, you're dead. So yeah. the quality of your sword was so important and how you handled it was so important because otherwise that's, that was your life. Yeah. Really, really crazy. Mm -hmm. And then the honor and, and tradition and culture around it, they would do this ceremonial uh, suicide if mm -hmm. they dishonored their family. Have you, do you guys know what this mm -hmm. is? Were they, mm -hmm. yeah, what they that's call real. That? Yeah. 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 They would mm -hmm. actually dim disembowel themselves yeah, that's because of, if the, of, if they dishonored, you know, for whatever reason. Now what, what has been the uh, neatest thing that you've learned? Like, so like the cool, like that you go, Oh, that's cool. I had no idea. Like, is it, what, what have you learned? That's neat. About swords? Yeah, I'm sure you learned a lot, but I mean, what stands out to you of like, like, Oh, I had no idea or I wouldn't have thought that. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if I had any epiphanies like that. But well, I, I just mean, had one right now when you showed up with your swords. I had no idea that you buy a super rare sword like that and you don't even get the blade in it. They ship you, they put a wood blade on it. They ship you the blade in a separate case because you it's so they want it so pristine and it could technically, you know, rust, like you said. Like I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't know that either until I actually received them. Yeah. Uh, so, the yeah, the blade was actually shipped separately from the handle of the sword. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't know that. I guess that, that would be one thing I would say. Was, Have you seen the demonstrations that they've done, Doug, where they have, I don't know what they use, but it looks like, I don't know what it is. Like but they did on Bodyguard? Like, they like throw the bamboo silk or something? It looks like it. Bamboo. Yeah. And then they, 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 they hit it with one uh, <laughs> slice. Like, yeah. Even like piece of paper. Yeah, that was like, <laughs> yeah like they shaved it off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like, remember, uh, remember on Bodyguard? Yeah, when he throws the the silk, he he opens the samurai sword and he turns it upside down and he throws her her little sash up in there and it floats down and just goes. Phew. No, I don't watch that. Don't I think that? that's no. BS, though. You think so? No. I think that's BS. I don't really? That. I feel like yeah, you I don't think they're that sharp. To, to have me I mean, remember. I don't. I, yeah, because there's no weight to that sash, right? I don't feel like Kevin Costner would lie. I yeah, well maybe not. Seems, that was a very realistic seems, movie. He seems, and, uh, come on, Adam. Yeah, no, he seems, he seems. No, don't make Adam say <laughs> <sing, dude. laughs> Please don't make him say. Gosh, uh, one, one of these days. Hey, yeah. you know what? I was just thinking. Your um, your your super red face didn't peel. Yeah, you were you I were kept like it. I, I like it's a little bit of uh, color, yeah, which little, is rare. You got tan, you yeah. actually see you do tan. It just is a pro. You're white, red, and then tan. I just uh, yeah. Well, what normally happens is it gets all crusty and then it ends up flaking off and then it's gone. You know, and so <laughs> I actually and we we had talked about kind of using Caldera before as I was like sunburned. Oh, and did I, you do that? And I did. I did at first, and I and then I kind of was off, and then my skin was drying out and then it was start, starting to peel. And so I had like little bits that were starting to peel. And then I started to, I was like, oh shit. Like It works. And then I started putting it back on there and it totally like prevented it. It was only like two days and then it just never peeled again. Oh, that's it awesome. Works. You know, you know yeah. what product of theirs that I've actually been using consistently now so I can talk about it because I Let me guess. Hold on, look at your face. The eye cream. Stupid. Did you use the ice cream? <laughs> yes, that's what your it is. Your eyes look younger. You don't know that from looking at me like, I get out of here with He that. looks less tired. Hey, look no, at, what, I, just got. what I <laughs> noticed, <laughs> <laughs> I, what I actually noticed, because I remember I was asking like, what's the real difference between that and the other cream? Yeah. They, they, they feel similar. I would think that if they're going in the same place, it would be, but they have something in them to help with uh, the puffiness. Yeah. To keep down like the inflammation there. And that's what I noticed. So what I noticed is like the, there's been a, like last night was a night I didn't sleep hardly at all. And so I woke up with like super like puffy eyes. I actually can notice a difference and it it brings that down. So if you're somebody hmm. who gets like really, I do because I have fat face, right? So it's like yeah. you get, I get <laughs> extra. Get disorder. I get yeah. extra. <laughs> I get extra <laughs> puffy eyes. Like, fat face. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. If I have, if I get like puffiness there, I think mine is like abnormally bigger than the average mm -hmm. person that gets like puffy eyes. And so, do you guys know what models you use for puffy eyes? Preparation H. Yeah. What? Hemorrhoid, hemorrhoid cream. <laughs> That's yep. funny. I got That's grounded weird. for using that on my sister's Listen. face. That's really. I, whoa, who's whoa, the, whoa. Who's <laughs> the first to so use that? Yeah. Well, and, and why? You know it what I mean? shrinks. I think it's a vasoconstrictor. Isn't that isn't that baby rash cream or no whatever? preparation H? That's oh, hemorrhoid right. yes, Yeah, but like uh, the, the guy confused. that initially was using it was like, oh, I got a little leftover. You know? Yeah, like, <laughs> how's that happen? <laughs> so what what is it? Is it because it has an it's anti a vasoconstrictor. Oh, uh, okay. So so the way it works on hemorrhoids. So a hemorrhoid is a swollen, uh, essentially, like you want to say, blood vessels. And it causes them to constrict, and so. So, do you, you think there's? Is, do you think there's something naturally that does that in the Caldera cream? Do you know? Yes, there is. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why. That's, so that's puppies, why it's doing yeah, that. But okay. it ain't preparation H, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. <laughs> yeah, that would be. I good. wouldn't use preparation that's not a good H commercial on your, on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, no, I actually, I mean, I actually really notice. You know me, I'm always like Mr. Skeptical. Before I say something, I gotta, I gotta test it five, yeah. five thousand mm -hmm. times before I go like, okay, I feel like I've seen a difference. It's where I notice it. I don't notice it on day to day stuff. It's not, but yeah. if I notice I have extra puffy eyes that morning or with that, and I make an effort to really rub that in, mm. I, it it definitely tamps it down. So it makes a difference. I have some uh, updating news. I've been the only one here like on watch for Antarctica news. Oh, just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm always keep something. my eyes out there for it. Yeah, so you see this? There's a report that actually they found an underground lake. Yeah, in Antarctica. Like 
So like, so you know what that means? It's like don't. it's been frozen they over don't. for thousands of years, whatever. But they're they're anticipating that the sediment at the bottom of the lake is probably millions of years old. Mm. Which it also, it also means untested. it also means there's aliens. Well. <laughs> That's that's quite a leap from. Isn't that, is, well, isn't that, isn't that <laughs> where Alien and Predator, the cave, and the, the Alien versus Predators movie, isn't that where it's in Antarctica, know. where they they dig in the hole in the cave, they go really deep. Did they? Yeah, yeah, they found some uh, some old ruins or something. Yeah, that was yeah, that yeah. was. So okay, Alien explain Predator. what an what an underground lake is. That means basically lake it's a lake Snow and a cave. Yeah. It's a big cave. And then well, they were flying over. I guess it was like a Chinese plane, and then they found through. Through looking, they they could see like a visible lake underneath the, sh the sheets of they ice. Use ice penetrating radar. Yeah, and so they use radar to detect it. But um, so it, it shows that I mean, obviously it's a land mass. It's not just one huge thing of ice. Like there's there's a land mass there, uh, and so who knows? Like if there's there's life in that lake underneath all that ice. I told you guys about that experiment. So that do we, the, do the we go? Do we go in and do something? I mean, do they? Will they I think they're, they're going drill. and drilling. Oh, and, they will. Yeah, they're yeah. doing an expedition. Well, because oh, you can look back in time. That's that's interesting. You can you can literally look back in time by with that by accurate carbon now. dating that we have. Huh? Stupid. <laughs> Stop it. Stop we, can, we can get within. We're a million gonna find years dinosaurs or so. and prove you wrong, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Super accurate. <laughs> you guys remember that? I told you guys about that Soviet uh, experiment, right? Where they were digging the deepest hole ever, and I think it was in Antarctica. And they, the story goes that they encountered some creature that uh, maybe you can look it up, Doug. It was like the the the. Yeah, the I'm hearing all these stories, and it's it's of like creatures that it was it there. was uh, um, controlling the minds of some of the researchers. What's the update them. on the Mexican? Aliens? They had to fill the hole in. Where was this? What? This is, I believe, in Antarctica. Look up the the deepest the the deepest hole ever dug by the Soviets, and then put monster. Yeah. And it's just like this whole thing about like this creature. The what movie? There was a movie that was based off of it. What was that movie? It was in the snow. It's in the 80s or 90s. And there's like a creature that... Nobody? Okay. No. <laughs> Justin is the only hope for you on that. I know. I got I'm more right at Justin and I, we're not watching that. Yeah. yeah. Is that? Uh, like yeah. 80s. It's called the it? Cola Super Deep Borehole. Mm. It went down, I think, boy, 12,000 meters. I did put Monster in there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, there was a Monster. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's see here. Monster. Yeah, the deepest hole ever dug. Is oh yeah, that, and yeah. The temperature got up to three hundred fifty-six degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. No, there was a whole story. There was a whole story about it that there was a, a monster in there. I mean, there's a lot of weird, undiscovered stuff there. I mean, it's it's. I think that's why I'm so interested in it. It's like we we. Shackleton oh. way back in the day did some, you know. No, I'm interested in that. Uh -oh, so I'm curious that to say? see what happens. I'm, what does that well, say? the deepest hole, this is 40,000, oh 230 God. feet deep. By the way, By the way, that doesn't even go through the crust of the earth. You know it that, right? says construction yeah. is so deep that locals swear you can hear the screams of souls tortured in hell. <laughs> wow. wow. The, 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 <laughs> That's creepy, The crust dude. is deeper than that even, huh? We've never. I don't think we've ever gotten through the crust of the earth. Wow. I know. I know you'd think they would be able to go down. Yeah. Now, now here's what's weird about this. So let's speculate. Because during the Cold War, we did a lot of weird stuff that was funded by the government. Uh -huh. The U.S. and the Soviets were trying to dig the deepest hole. Why? Yeah, why? Why were we doing that? And I don't know. Reach hell. Explain uh, <laughs> Operation High Jump. Too, I mean, there's still a very reach high. Hell? There's still a very high probability it's there. The hell is actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Deep. We haven't even broke through the crust, dude. We're not even close to getting yeah. to where hell could be. I mean, no. I'm, I'm I'm wondering why they were trying to do that, and what would the, what would be the point? So it be took just so you know, same it, point to get into the it moon. It took uh, 20 years to go 40,000 feet deep, and it's only about one third of the way through the crust. See? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Dude. Yeah, we need Nuts. better drills. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, if you think about the close. The the how many drill bits they probably broke, the torque that was put on such a long device and then getting rid of the sediment. I mean, it's yeah. that's why it would take so long. Yeah. To drill, so I'm sure. Yes, yeah, some of the I layers there are almost around how that diamond would be hard rocks. You know? Yeah, but there's got to be a, there, you're there, you're right though. There has to be a there had to be a war reason why we would have funded that. Like, why are we all digging holes as deep as we can? <laughs> Unless we're just trying to, like, like. <laughs> I guess maybe because we're guys. Oh, I got the biggest do. hole. You know, like you're yeah. over there, I'm over here. Like, oh, Adam, how, how deep is that? I mean, like, is it know. is it that much different than the moon race? No, yeah. the moon race was literally to show them that if we could launch a, a rocket to the moon, then we could 
put a well, rocket imagine, in your backyard. Imagine if we could imagine if we could launch a rocket up your ass. But <laughs> you know maybe that's the same concept. Is that, is that the motivation? <laughs> yeah, just shove that Take in the that. deepest hole possible. Yeah. Well, if you uh, theoretically though, it wouldn't do anything, right? Theoretically, if you did that, then and you threw something down it, it would just stay in the middle, right? Because yeah. that's where all the all the gravity is. Well, I mean, is, is this related at all to earthquakes? Because I know, like, they drill holes a lot of times to see kind of like the, oh. how it affects uh, the plates, and 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 they've found ways of like manipulating seismic activity. Well, f fracking causes has caused some some right. minor earthquakes in certain places. Yeah. So I don't know. So weaponizing, yeah. you know. I wanted to tell you guys. I don't know what you call this as a dad. If, if this you guys experienced this before or not, but. I'm at, so we're in Redwood City. We go out to eat at uh, Palo Alto this weekend. It's just Katrina and I. And next to us is a couple with a son who looks like he's a young teen. Kid's real sharp, clean cut kid. And his dad is like, like drilling him like questions, like all related to the real estate market. And this kid is like spouting out all kinds of the like detail on like, data that's going on right now really? and his dad's make, making him make an argument okay then why would this not be a good time to invest or why would this like what why these markets oh, that's why, cool. oh my god it was like so so funny because i mean one of our favorite things to do when we go out to places like that is i love eavesdrop I love, yeah eavesdrop people watch like we're always doing that and katrina and i were like sitting there eating they're right here like right to the right of me and you, you could tell that she totally caught that I picked up on it because I'm like no longer listening to her talking to me. <laughs> You're just eating You're silently. Right. Just and she stops over. too. So there's like this moment of like silence and we're just listening for a while. I love her because she just, she like actually introduced herself right away. And she says, hi. She goes, what's, uh, how old's your son? And then they look at her kind of like sideways. They're like, we're totally listening to your conversation. My husband I know right now is geeking out on the fact that your son is spouting off all this information. And then we got in this great conversation. It was like his, so he goes to high school at Palo Alto and he has a class that like, he had this whole dissertation that he had to put out for that. And I forgot the name of the wow, class. in high school? Yes. Wow, that's cool. Wow. Yes, yeah, that's... it was. But I mean, I really did have this, like I was totally admiring the, the whole thing. Like to see the dad, like having this really intelligent, like, investor type of conversation with his young, you know, teenage boy like that, his son to be able to, to battle did back you, and forth. Speaking of like, eavesdropping, did you cool. guys, did you guys ever do that when you were kids where you're with your buddies and you know, there's girls next to you. So you make up conversations, hoping they'll, did you guys ever do that? <laughs> You never did that? <laughs> yeah, like you, you do. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Because you know they're listening. Like, oh, that. man, med school's kicking my ass. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> like, oh, man, I injured myself lifting all the weights you know, yes. in the gym again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I probably did. I'm sure we did. Yeah. I'm sure we did. I something. mean, I gave her 15 <laughs> orgasms last night, yeah. but we had to break up because yeah. you know, she couldn't handle yeah, it. Yeah, it too much. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, all this money was falling in my pockets yeah. when I was walking home. I'm sure we did I knew a guy that used to, he, he had fake ATM receipts. <laughs> this is true. This is oh a true my story. God. Brilliant. He had fake ATM no, receipts. He did. He yes, he did. Did. like leave them or drop them. No, me. this is where he would write his phone number. When he would write a girl's uh, number, oh, he'd be like, hold on, let me get a piece of paper. And he'd Bro, like, did that work for he'd pull him? It. Yeah. Of course it did. Yeah, it did. That's and he'd hilarious. write on the back of it, and then he'd get a phone call right away. Oh, oh right. my God. I've actually never heard what of that. What a scumbag, That's if you think about so, that, right? Yeah. Well, especially if it's nowhere, if you have That's nowhere so near scary. that. It was. <laughs> nowhere near. <laughs> This oh, guy had like twenty five bucks in his account. How mad is she? You know what I'm saying? She's yeah. been dating him for like months, putting all this time. I'm gonna call like, John back. That's like the guy with the Ferrari key chain. You know, or the shoes comes to the bar. Yeah, the shoes or the hat. He was just all... driving a Mazda or something yeah, yeah. else. You know, but he's. I that used to be a common thing we used to see. I feel like I used to see guys that would be rocking a, like a, a Ferrari hat, or they make Ferrari <laughs> shoes and stuff like that. And I'd be like, like because we were in the gym, right? So yeah. we'd see these people. So I'd like follow them out in the parking lot to go see what they drill. Oh, I'm gonna see this Ferrari, right? <laughs> this guy gets in some Mazda. Yeah. Oh, I. I knew a guy like that, but he had a, a Lotus, so it was like it's a nice car, but yeah. it's not a Ferrari, not a Ferrari dude. Yeah. Like, yeah. Get the fuck yeah. out of here, come on, bro. Yeah. yeah, I think that's funny. I just to wear the to wear the apparel like that. I, the only way that you it'd be okay, I guess. I mean, it's okay. You can do whatever the fuck you want, but I think that where I would justify it, it's like maybe like my uncle worked for the company or mm. like they like they like I had a family member that was like tied. Do yeah. actual Ferrari owners though do that? You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. I mean, there's, they do? Oh, there's a type. Okay, let's dude. be honest. I know. In order know to be able to afford right that, now. okay, you're probably a nerdy, no, but, su nerdy, successful guy. Yeah, but do that? You think they walk around and advertise it like that? With some shirts absolutely. Or okay. I mean, you have, so, you have some gear up, dude. You so have they want you have a, a half and half divide, right? You have a, like the ultra wealthy that can afford stuff like that. You have the yeah. like. Well, um, let me ask you guys this: yeah. Who wears like gold gym shirts? Is it the Jack guy or is it the guy that just started working out? 
It's usually not the super jack. Right. Guy. It's probably, yeah, it's probably the guy that just got one. I mean, one that or better like analogy was like affliction and. Uh, yes, dude. And when I did jujitsu, when, oh, yeah. yeah, when I started yeah, yeah. jujitsu, yeah, 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 yeah. all the new guys were wearing the like, I need Brazilian jujitsu. Yeah, the gear. I mean, MMA. And then it's, once you get into it, you don't. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a type of person that would do that, right? There's definitely the, the nerdy guy who probably is yeah. afraid to approach girls with that. And he wants to signal that I've got a Ferrari and mm -hmm. he's probably geared all up in it and like announcing it. And then there's the other, you know, per, the other half that are like, I don't want anyone to know. I have it's this just shit interesting. Dude, you're money. right with no. the fight guy shirts. Yes. Like, especially the ones that like just signed up on the weekend. Oh, and like, dude, that was yeah. a going to tap, the bar with tap that. Out like, and, yeah. For that. Like come notorious on, for that. Yeah, I know for sure. That's stupid. Did you know that, um, What's his name? Sean Whalen. Uh, he hired uh, the old tap out guy. Did you oh, know yeah. that? Yeah. Did you know Dan, that? Dan, no. uh, whatever his name yeah. is. Um, yeah. God, I can't believe you remember his name. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. One of the one of the main dudes. Was well, there was Wally three, wor worked for them. Three or four of them. There was three or four one of them. One of them died. Yeah. 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 The one yeah. that my the ex mask guy. was uh, dating. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Painted yeah. his face. <clears throat> the same time he was dating someone else, so it's not that big of a deal. I don't oh, think. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that was really weird. She showed up to a funeral and like, the, like there was more than one girl that was there and stuff like that. Oh my god. Yeah. I thought that was kinda awkward. Well, it would be a weird time to Did you go to the funeral? No, no, I didn't go. You heard about it? No, no. I yeah, because we together. were we were talking at that same time. That's so, crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. You had something to shout out, right? Oh, uh, oh yeah. I wanted to talk about the uh okay. So obviously, well, you probably don't care, Sal, but most people are paying attention. <laughs> Most people are, the paying, athletic ones are, are, are paying attention yeah. to the, the, the Colorado Buffaloes right now because of Deion Sanders. I mean, it's one of the coolest things to watch right now. He Colorado has Colorado Buffaloes? Yeah. His Is that an NFL team? No, it's not. No, I was going to say, I never heard that. It's, no, a, co it's, a, college college, it's a college football bad. team. He is, he is the new head coach. His son. Were Buffaloes? His son is the quarterback. And there was obviously a lot of hype with him just coming there. Colorado, by the way, last year, I think they were like 1-11. They had a terrible record. So, And then the opening game, they played like last year's uh, bowl. Uh, one of the play team, TCU, that was in the bowl last mm, year. Mm -hmm. And they beat them. And so yeah. got all this attention. Beat Nebraska, yep. just beat Colorado State. Yeah, and so... Anyways, well, if cool. you are First aware matching. of that and that's already caught your attention or your spouse's attention and, and you're curious of like some of the backstory is there is a documentary on um, it's called Coach Prime on Amazon Prime, which is Deion Sanders thing. And it talks about his journey with uh, uh, Jackson State, which is where he coached before this, the program that he was trying to build, the vision that he had, some of the kids that he had there that have followed him over uh, to Colorado, and so it kind of gives you an idea of his whole story. But I mean, I I love Deion Sanders. I'm for sure going to watch it. He has <laughs> yeah. two sons on the team. He has two boys, right? He has yeah. a boy who's a, a a a corner or a safety. One's a corner. The junior is the corner. Yeah, and the quarterbacks is other. Isn't that cool? He's got two boys that are. He was, yeah. he was wow. a great running back. <laughs> oh shit! Did he know something? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know that? I looked that up. Do you know he's Justin. the only person, Sal? Do you know he's the only person in history ever? Didn't he play? Baseball and football? Yeah. On the sir. same day. I know. Only only person has ever Listen, done, done that before. What saves me same is day. I remember random shit that when I'm at, when I'm hanging out with guys, because guys like to talk about yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. And they start talking about things and I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'll throw in the occasional one thing. Oh, yeah. Dion, remember when he played baseball and football on the same day? And everyone's like, he knows what he's talking like about. The, our version is like triangle choke. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, we know that. And then I'll walk away. Yeah, yeah just drop. And they tell her why. Just Sal, Mike, that's your yeah. mic drop Sal right there. Sal knows a lot about everything. Yes. You know? God, he knows no, everything about I knew one that thing. That guy knows so much about everything right I knew there. one thing. Yeah. That was it. That's it. Sometimes I'm convinced that's you do that with a lot of stuff. That's all you need. That's it. It's for podcasting. Yeah, it is a podcasting skill. Organifi makes organic supplements to help you with your health, athletic performance, fat loss, and muscle building. They have superfood blends that can help you with recovery and relaxation, like their gold juice or their green juice, which is phenomenal for inflammation and overall health, or for energy, like their red juice. It's a non-stimulant uh, superfood blend that improves energy and athletic performance, but they have much more. Go check them out and get yourself a discount. Go to Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump, and then use the code Mind Pump to get 20% off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Kelly from Virginia. Hi, Kelly. How can we help you? Hello. Thank you for having me. How are you guys? Very good. We're, we're doing great. amazing. So cool to see you guys. <laughs> 
Uh, well, just thank you guys so much for um, for having me on. You had answered a previous questions about maps performance and me being gassed. Uh, the question's a little similar, um, but 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 very. I, I don't know. I think it's a little bit more um, a little more um, detailed in terms of some of the struggles I've been having over the past few years. So just thank you for everything that you guys do for me and for everyone else. Yeah, you're welcome. So. Thank you. Um, so I'll just read from my question. Um, over the past three years, I've had a goal of decreasing my body fat percentage to below 30%, but uh, for some reason can't seem to break it. Um, I've been lifting consistently since 2020 with, you know, I, I guess I've been working out previous to that, but like really lifting with your programs um, since around 2020 um, and had been pretty dialed in with nutrition and activity levels. Um, and per some of the guidance from your previous episodes, I started uh, going into a bulk um, for the better half of last year. Or so, um, yeah, most of 2022, um, but uh, sprinkled in mini cuts um, and, and like kind of maintenance spaces throughout. Um, the scale had been pretty stagnant, but I was really happy because I was like slowly increasing on all of my core lifts, which I know is a, a big cue for you guys. Um, but um, I was feeling pretty good, wanted to get kind of a base level of where I was. Um, and I went to get a DEXA scan back um, in May, May or June. Um, and uh, it still said that I was around 30% body fat. Um, I have been kind of at a maintenance at that point. Um, and, you know, I, I walk eight to 10,000 steps generally per day. Um, I try to think, you know, I, I tend to think that I'm pretty healthy, like lifestyle wise, don't really drink too much anymore. Um, and so, um, the, the guy who did my scan, I had a nutritionist call, um, they encouraged me to look at my hormone levels. And, um, uh, after going through, um, Stephen Cabral and, and his team, um, uh, found that my cortisol levels were really high. My progesterone was also, um, really low. And that there's, you know, some cor correlation between or potentially cor correlation between. So I guess I'm just confused about how to break through on my um, body fat goals. Um, is it related to my cortisol? Do I just need to move more? Am I making excuses for myself? So just trying to tease out exactly um, where, you know, where I'm at um, and, and how I can break through it. Because I, I, I don't know, I feel like I shouldn't be super neurotic about my health and nutrition. I don't think it's like super um, helpful, but you know, 30% body fat. Um, I don't know. I just, I just feel like getting it under 30 as a, as a female um, is important. So yeah, just would love to get your take. There's nothing inherently wrong with being 30%. Uh, is it, are you just afraid? Is it the number that you saw the number and you're like, I want to get that down? Or is it that you feel like you want to be leaner as well? Yeah, you know, I think it's it's kind of two things, like selfishly, you know, and and honestly, of course, just want to look uh, like I work out. Um, I think I I kind of do sometimes, but um, I I think I'm really strong um, in the gym, and I feel really good. I'm in power lift right now, um, mm -hmm. and I've loved I've loved it. I did strong before this, so went from anabolic to strong to power lift, um, and I've been loving it. Um, and I don't know, I just feel like I don't look the way I lift. Um, and maybe that's just subjective, but well, yeah, it is subjective, yeah. but, um, there's that, but then also, you know, I, um, my husband and I are starting to try again and I've just been encouraged, you know, maybe, um, you know, just to have a healthy, healthier pregnancy, you know, just to work on my, my body fat. So it's a little bit just more like health and longevity wise I, I and, and goal wise, but then also, yeah, like selfishly just a number I would, really want to reach. Would this be your first kid? This would be my second. Okay. So. How did you feel when you were pregnant with your first? Did you, or did you feel really good during pregnancy? No, it was a, it was kind of a, a, a complicated pregnancy. Um, we, my son was born at 28 weeks. Okay. So, um, you know, they didn't have any real rhyme or reason. There was no like diagnosis as to why he was born preterm. Um, but, um, yeah, you know, I I didn't have like the best lifestyle at the time too. I okay. was young and you know, okay. yeah, I well, was young. Your body fat percentage is fine for pregnancy. Um, you know, you know, twenty five to thirty percent would be fine for for most women. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the hormones: high cortisol, low progesterone. Uh, are you familiar with the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance? Have you looked that up? 
Yeah, yeah. And and it it resonates very okay. much. Um, and I've been working on, you know, taking magnesium. Um, I've been working on sleeping and stress. And I will say I haven't rechecked my hormones over the past two, three months, but um I do like physically feel better. Like I can bounce back from, you know, like and not feel so bloated after a, a of you know weekend away that sort of thing there are just like certain symptoms i feel like are getting better but um yeah estrogen dominance is definitely um yeah i i, so that, I think i probably feel through that that um can often come from gut issues right so your body's ability to clear estrogen might be a little compromised so typically this looks like digestive issues constipation um would be a common one um, and can that affect your body fat percentage? I mean, it can, it can through behaviors. Cortisol definitely is a reflection of your, your, a body, your, your ability to manage and handle the stress that you currently have. So either that would be a lifestyle thing or a relationship with a lifestyle, um, thing. It, it could be one of one of each or both in that particular sense. As far as getting leaner is concerned, it's a very basic approach, right? Take your maintenance calories, cut them, eat a high protein diet, and then you should get leaner. But if there's an underlying gut issue that is the root cause of the low progesterone, high cortisol, you're going to want to address that first before you start to really try to tackle getting leaner with diet. Otherwise, it's going to be an uphill battle. So I don't know exactly what route you're on with the practitioners uh, with Dr. Cabral's team. I'm assuming though they're looking at gut health and they're 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 moving you in that direction and that might be why you feel better. Is, is am I hitting the nail on the head or are you guys doing other stuff? Well, I mean, it was um it was just the it was the consultation. It was like a 30 minute or maybe an hour long consultation. Um and they pointed me in the direction of different supplements and like what tests I could take. I hadn't I was like, let me try to figure out like some of the the actionable things first, like sleeping better and, yeah. you know, reducing yeah. my stress and stuff before I get into that. Um, but they, they did mention gut, gut issue stuff potentially. How's your, yes. dige how's your digestion? I think it's actually okay. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's okay. Uh, there were, there was a, a like a, a month span where it was totally off. Um, but I think I just like was drinking too much tea or something and, and I figured it out, but, um, uh, on a day to day, I think it's, um, it's actually okay. okay. I, I had a question about, um, you made a comment about, um, being neurotic about calories in tracking is, uh, you don't think it's very healthy, but, and then in your notes, you have that you are eating between 1900, 200, which leads me to believe that is that a guesstimation or are you actually weighing and tracking food? I was, I was, okay. I was really, um, I was really focused, um, in 22 and the early part of this year, um, on, on my calories. Um, but I think like, I'm just the type of person when I like, when they told me that my cortisol levels were high, I was stressing out about how to get my cortisol levels down. Yeah. So I Which was like, I don't, up. you know, I, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to be, I want to approach this in a, in a more, I guess, yeah, healthy way. And, um, but it, it was, they, that was accurate. Um, I had bulked up to 2,600, 2,700 and I was doing okay. Um, and then, but then I went down, um, to about 2,100 and then like the mini cuts, I did 1900 too. So, um, you could be, yeah, but I haven't, if you were my client, this. I would have you, I would, I would definitely have you work with the functional medicine practitioner, just kind of get the root issue of the low progesterone. I'm, I'm, my guess is it has to do with your digestion and you're not clearing estrogen out of your body, um, properly. So you get a little bit of estrogen dominance uh, going on there. Uh, that's not my field. So I'm, I'm using an educated guess I would say, but I would work with them and then the cut, I would do five days a week of 1,500 calories, and then, and then I would do two days a week of 2,000 calories. It'll be a slow cut. You're not going to see like rapid fat loss doing it that way, but that's okay. I don't want you to go too quickly considering everything you've told me. So it's like a five-day cut, two-day maintenance. I think that would be a perfectly fine approach so long as you also address the, and what what's happening with your hormones and get to the root cause. Because if there is a gut issue – that's going on. This is going to be a constant struggle. And what will happen with the cut is you'll find uh, cravings are going to kick in or hormones will work against you. And you may find your body trying to lose muscle rather than body fat uh, as a result. Yeah. 
Yeah, I um, earlier in 22, I had done a cut like prior to the bulk. Um, I had done a not, I mean, not a drastic cut. Um, I think probably 17, 1500 or something. Um, and I went to get a DEXA scan and I had yeah increased body fat, lost muscle. Yeah. And I was like, what is going on? Um, and right now, like I'm, I feel great. Like, I feel like I'm doing great and I'm like progressing on the lifts. I think it's also just by virtue of doing power lift. It's yeah. um, just new to me. And like, I don't know, you, you have like measurable, you know, weights and that you increase every, you know, few weeks or whatever. And so um, that's been really good, but um, yeah, I think that's, totally the all the, the addressing the underlying issues. Yeah. And I don't, it's not, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but I do think that it, so it's, it's a very straightforward approach. I I'm very confident that if you kind of did what I said, you're going to get there, it'll be a slow process, but you'll see your body transform in the direction you want. So it's literally a five day cut, two day maintenance, but be very consistent. I would work with the function. I would do the tests that they recommended that you take. I'm assuming they did some, they, they wanted you to do some gut health testing, probably food sensitivity and a stool test to see, you know, if you have any, any, any bacterial overgrowth. And then I would, I would, uh, take it from there. I would also make sure you drink, uh, a, a good amount of water on a regular basis. So close to a gallon of water a day, half a gallon to a gallon of water a day. Um, and I would just start there and take it from there. And it's pretty straightforward. I think it'll be very straightforward if you do it that way. I think you should see a nice, probably 2% loss in body fat on a, on a month, every month. So that's what I would expect about 2% 2, 2 down every 30 days or so, which is a nice consistent cut. And I don't think it's so much, I, I, I don't think it will compromise your fertility either if you're trying to have a baby. Now I will say this, if you get pregnant, I would stop trying to go in a deficit. So if you do get pregnant, then I would forget about tracking. I would just eat when I was hungry, stick to healthy food and continue lifting. Uh, it's yeah. not smart to try to go in a cut uh, when you're pregnant. That's a terrible idea. Yeah, no, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. No, this is, that's super helpful. I, um, it's funny because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I'm kind of in this in between where a lot of my friends either um, are in the same life stage as me where they're having kids and married and, and, but some of them are still single and partying and whatever. And so you see all these people, all these, like a lot of my single friends that are eating like crap and drinking every weekend. I'm like, well, how do you, how do you look like that? Yeah. <laughs> and so I think, yeah, it is something of a, a mix of, uh, of, you know, just addressing the underlying issue. Um, yeah. yeah Cause I'm like, I'm, I'm so consistent. Like I walk every day, I work out every day. I'm, you know, I'm so good about this stuff. You're, you're, how is this? How is you're this fit and healthy. You're fit and healthy. Yeah. You're doing okay. <laughs> yeah. I think you're being a little harsh on yourself, yeah. but there's probably something underlying that might is making it a little bit more challenging. So I think you have a valid question, by the way, in regards to the friends that you see that are doing that, would you trade places with them? Do you want to be right. the single no. girl of 30 going out trying to yeah. <laughs> meet people yeah. when you got a nice husband and kid at home? You're, I think you're okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, with the dating apps and stuff, I can't imagine. Oh my so, God. No, I'm good. And, and you're on the right track with your mindset and the program you're following too. So I think that's great what you're doing. After so. power lift, I would go maps anabolic. I wouldn't do anything with super high volume though. And until you really figure out what's going on with the hormone uh, situation, but estrogen uh, dominance, I would look it up. Mm -hmm read about it. It typically, it typically has to do with the digestive system and your ability to clear out, um, estrogen out of your body. And usually you, you'll see, uh, issues with uh, fully clearing. So like, di like digestive issues that look more like constipation and bloating typically. Mm -hmm. Okay. All okay. right. Will do. Thank All right. you. All right, Kelly. By the way, do you have maps anabolic? Cause if you don't, I'll send it to you. Oh yeah. I have like everything you oh, guys good. have. I'm, yeah, cool. Major you, consumer of the mind pump. Are you in our forum, and Kelly? I got my husband on you guys too. It's, are, uh, are you, we always say, my mind pump. <laughs> so, you, if, right. if you're not in our forum, I'll let you in our forum too, Kelly, so we can follow up with you. That'd be great. Yeah, right. thank you so right. much. We'll put you in that. there. Awesome. Thank Thanks, you. Kelly. All right. Take care. You thank you. It. Bye. You got it. Very, pretty straightforward. Yeah. I think that's going to, I mean, like, like I said, if she was my client, it would be very straightforward the direction we would go, unless something really weird Yeah, definitely the, popped the up. gut health uh, direction with the functional medicine. That's where, I mean, that's yeah. that's where I would look. First it could be thing. something else, but that's exactly right. Yeah, I, I, wanted to to navigate. I wanted to address what she said about pregnancy and healthy. There is a little bit of a misconception on um, body fat percentage and what's healthy for a woman to, to get pregnant. I think 
you assume, in fact, uh, one of the things that when Katrina and I were first trying to get pregnant, we uh, struggled with was that her she, body fat percentage was high low. enough. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's, uh, she's low. not even, she wasn't even dieting. She was yeah. just uh, health, what you, what we would consider healthy, athletic, athletic making good food choices. Yeah, they, probably, they probably told her to gain body fat. That's right. right. Yeah. And we were having a hard time getting pregnant. And the doctor said, you know, um, honestly, maybe, maybe try to put on a little bit of body fat. And she was like, what? Yeah. Again, because in her head, she's like, I don't feel lean and ripped or anywhere yeah. near that right now. I'd like to be leaner. And he's like, Yeah, but not ideal for uh getting pregnant. So honestly, between that 20 to 25 minimum on the low end and then 30 is not bad at all. It's no. not it doesn't have like adverse effects until you start getting really high. Yeah. In the, and it really in the depends on the person. I mean, yeah. generally, mm -hmm. once you start to get above 30, you might notice some stuff, but uh, I mean, between, like you said, between 25 to 30, I mean, you're fine. Yep, if, yep. Especially if you're fit and you and everything else. Yeah, you're good. strength training, you're active. Right. Yeah. Our next caller is Carol from Indiana. Hi, Carol. How can we help you? Hi. Um, Hi. I'm actually Hi, from California. I'm not sure okay, um, so how we got that, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hi guys. Um, first of all, really appreciate all the work you do. Um, as everybody says, you know, the information's great. Um, I've let so many friends know, you know, to listen in if they have any questions about things fitness related and life related. So I just, I, I appreciate it. And, you know, I've been listening for a few years now, so great stuff. Thank you. How can we help you? Um, <laughs> so basically, um, it's not a super complicated question, but, um, I'll just go ahead and get into it with my background. And then if you need to know anything else, go ahead and ask. Um, I'm 23 years old, um, 5'3", 125 pounds. Um, I danced ballet my whole life up until graduating high school. Since then, I've been weight training for around five years. Um, I also work at Disneyland um, as a parade performer. Um, I've been in a cut for a few months, and I got to my lowest weight at 120 pounds. Um, I'm now heading into a bulk. Um, now I weigh around 125 pounds. Um, and my goal is 135 and to hopefully make the most gains on my shoulders and my legs. I started MAPS Aesthetic last week. So now I'm on week two and I really like the full body days. I love switching up the frequency, um, but I'm not really interested in growing my biceps, triceps or my traps anymore. So I was wondering, is it okay to just kind of take the exercises out um, on some of the foundational days so that I'm just kind of maintaining the muscle mass or um, would you recommend removing them or replacing them with exercises from other muscle groups? Yeah. Just and remove them. Like, just yeah. remove them. Well, it depends. Hold on a second. Yeah. Well, first well, of all, what character mean? do you do in the parade? Stupid. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> that that I'm a dancer. Yeah. I'm just a dancer for like is, a... Hold on. Hold on. That has nothing to do with that. it. Hold on. Show us your biceps and we'll give you a real answer. Let's see. Yeah, no, oh, you're not, look at you that. Can, you can, yeah, yeah, no, those are bigger in sales. You can skip yeah, okay. biceps. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, it you, does. It, so, yeah, you're fine. You could skip them completely. Uh, and I wouldn't, because you're following MAPS Aesthetic, and that's already a high volume program, um, you don't necessarily, and those are small muscle groups. It's not going to be a big deal. And but, but you're still getting that work when you're doing chest and back. Like those muscles are yeah. getting engaged. They're not working. being neglected. Yeah. So it's not like you're completely neglecting them. So. Um, I think that's totally, totally fine. The mistake I do think that a lot of people make though, is they go, oh, okay, I'll just do more of the thing that I really want to work thinking that even more of that volume is going to be right. better for you. Not necessarily. And I would, I would just probably drop that, drop that off. Yeah. Or yeah. beginners, right? Let me skip this muscle group. It's like, no, no, no. You, you just got started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you need to train everything. You're totally fine uh, avoiding those things uh, in your training and really, because you're fit. You've been doing this for a while. You're obviously fit. You work out. You're, you're pretty strong. Um, you could cut those those out and it wouldn't be an issue uh, whatsoever. And you wouldn't notice any negative effects. You just don't want them to get more developed is is what you're saying. Yeah, you're, you're mm -hmm. totally fine. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Have you done any of our other programs or did, is MAPS Aesthetic the first one that you jumped into? Um, that's just the one I bought a few years ago. So then I've just run it like a few times. Um, otherwise, I kind of try and like program myself and like, I'll build it out according to like how many sets and I'll split it up throughout the week. So I've done it. I've done like different types of splits and everything, but yeah, pretty much just aesthetic. And that's like really different than what's what your, I probed what's, my what's your goal with the bulk? Where do you want to see most of that muscle go? She said shoulders and her legs. Shoulders and legs. Yeah. 
Okay, I mean, uh, I like Maps Powerlift. I like Symmetry. Or Sym Symmetry is the other program. Mainly, too, because, I mean, I I've trained a lot of dancers, and there's always a lot of imbalances to kind of work through, and, and that's usually not highlighted enough. And yeah. it, it gets highlighted a lot with unilateral training. So, you know, it could also help to um, any lagging body part, anything else specifically, too, that stands out. It'll kind of reveal itself. But have you ever done, like, a powerlifting style, like get really good at the deadlift and the squat and the... No, I mean, like I've worked on getting my, my deadlift and squat heavy, but like amongst bodybuilding style training. So never like really focused I like that lift. way. I like, like power. Yeah. yeah. For you. Well, I think that would be a that's great a good shift. I think that would be a great next program for, for you in, in, in a bulk would be phenomenal. Yeah. I think you would really, re you would reap a lot of benefit. So you've never done like pure strength training. Yeah. Um, I guess not. Oh I mean, yeah. So yeah, I yeah, like, I, do that. I like the idea of running power lift in your bulk and then your maintenance are cut in aesthetic yeah, just personally. So you're going to pack on the, the, as much muscle as you can in your bulk through power lift, which is going to be one of the better programs to do that. And then when you get into like really sculpting, I would run like a, a maintenance, mm -hmm. uh, to a slight cut in aesthetic where I, maybe I'd undulate that one week. I would be running like a maintenance calories. Then the next week I'd run like a cut or do that every two weeks, flip flop, uh, through aesthetic. I think you get some great benefit. Totally. From that. Okay. Yeah, I got it. I think I've run, I've run aesthetic through a cut before and you know, it worked out really well because of the high volume. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. I think I was just trying to like, like switch it up a little bit this time, but for sure power lift sounds like it would be a good, we'll send that to you. Yeah. We'll send that, we'll over. Send that over to you. What's your, what's your, your pace what is your deadlift and squat look like now? Um, like weight wise yeah. for one rep max. Yeah. I uh, haven't done like one in a, in a while, but for one rep, I've done a squat at uh 245 oh, yeah. and deadlift. Um, I've never done like my true one rep, but I can do 245 for like reps. Holy shit. Yeah. You're strong. You're strong as hell. Yeah. Yeah. Strong. Maps power lift in a, in a bulk. I think you're going to be yeah, going to yeah. trip out over the goals, uh, over the results with that. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Yeah, um, keep us. I had a. Go ahead. Wait, what were you, go ahead, what go were you ahead. saying? I was going to say, key, I, I can't wait to hear actually what those numbers, because you're already really strong. It'd be interesting to see uh, what kind of gains you see then. So yeah. circle back afterwards. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, my other question was just like, do you have any tips or advice for the bulk? Um, just because I've done, a, I've done a couple before, um, you know, felt really strong, felt really good, but just like, how can I optimize well, do you, do you have any, when you've done them in the past, do you find there's any challenges? So, or has it been super successful for you? Or do you find like, oh, I have a hard time with this or sometimes are, I have Do you track in the bulk or you just try and eat more? Um, I usually track. Um, I, I am pretty like, um, like precise, making sure I hit my protein and my calories. Like I kind of let the fat and carbs fluctuate because I, I feel good usually regardless because mm -hmm. i'm eating more um but here's a tip uh, here's a tip for you uh since shoulders and legs are a priority uh start some of your workouts with a sh the shoulder exercise first I, you probably don't or i don't know if you do that already or not but that's a there's some value to you being in a bulk because you want to develop shoulders lead the workout sometimes with shoulders i would basically toggle back and forth or those for sure are my one and one and two is legs and shoulders to start my workout Yeah, if you're tracking you're eating high protein the main thing i would focus on with the bulk are easily digestible foods so if whenever you're picking your starches and your your your, your fats pick foods that just feel super easy to digest because that becomes the challenge is how well you can assimilate the the food that you ate. What, Other, some are, people run into like things like bloat and digestive issues when they get into into a bulk, and that can really uh, cause things to plateau. What about um, creatine? You run creatine? Yeah, I'm okay. taking creatine. Okay. Oh cool. yeah, you're on yeah, point. No, you're, yeah, you're on point. You're on point. Yeah. The so now that Sal said that about the making sure you eat easily digestible foods, it does remind me of like when I get really to like towards the like end, like towards the goal weight it's harder to like really want to like eat those cleaner foods, even though like yeah. they're more easily digestible. So like sometimes I'll just have like, you know, like some cheap meals and then I, you know, won't hit my goal for that reason. But yeah, I'm going to try and be cleaner about it. Like this time towards when you, the end. When it gets to the point where you feel like you're force feeding yourself and you're like, this sucks, then you need to reverse out. Yeah. That, 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 that's just a sign. 
you need, and sometimes you need to reverse out for a week and then go back and you'll feel okay. Mm -hmm. I also think too, uh, as young and as fit as you are too, it's okay to do that. Like to also have balance in your life. Right. Totally. So like you, oh, you, you also don't, yeah. yeah, you also don't want to be so neurotic that you're like, Oh, I can't have that. It's like, no. Yeah. You're, what, you're, yeah what's you're, your cheat meal? Um, just like I'll let myself go out like to, you know, get food, like whether it's like canes, chicken or like yeah. just yeah. whatever sounds good to me. I'm like, OK, I'm going to have that yeah. because burger like, and fries every once in a while, yeah. a pizza okay. every yeah. once in a while. Like yeah. you, you Pasta. should you should do that. I mean, yeah. you're, at, you're yeah. at a point in your life like you don't want to be the girl who's carrying her Tupperware around all the time when you're in as good a shape as you are. So I would I would allow yourself to totally do that fine. every once in a while. Well, thank you guys. That's that's all I really had. But I'm like, you know, I'm super grateful to be here, and I'm super grateful for all that information. And you got it. Yeah, I'll definitely be running Powerlift next for if sure. You, if you have any connections with Disneyland, uh, just email <laughs> us. We all have kids. We got so. kids, so you know. Yeah, you know, secret no, places yeah, and discounted yeah. tickets, you know, stuff like Do that. Do you get to take, like, <laughs> like uh, I've been there before with a, Access. I forget what you guys call them, like a VIP person who has, like, paid annual membership where they, like, take us around the park and, like, we got to go to, like, the front of the line. Like, do you, can you do that to your family? Do you have access? No. Uh, that's, <laughs> no. like, spe only special yeah. people get that. Uh, I, yeah. I've never heard of that until we got to experience Adam it. Adam wants time. to do the princess dinner in the castle. He does. <laughs> <laughs> or breakfast. Really or wants I've been ruined after experiencing Disneyland that way. Now I'm like, man, i got to find somebody else who can do that. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Have you got it. have you gone to all the secret rooms? Because I even hear some of the employees haven't even been to all the secret no, rooms. No, no. Like yeah, that's wild. Like I think just, you know, depending on where you work, you might be like granted access or not. I I don't really know how it works because I've never been to like a secret room. But wow. isn't that crazy? <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, Carol. Thanks, Carol. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You got it. All right. I did the breakfast the the, the princess breakfast. I bet you with did. My daughter, I know you did. With my daughter. I know. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, we actually right. had to book it. And then they had the prince, and it was in the castle. And you meet up, and then they. I they, I they, thought that they, was. They, the, and my daughter did club thirty three. Yeah, time, so we right? did. All, yeah. I I actually got it to to go with somebody who was like paid like a crazy. They pay like a crazy membership fee. Like I don't like a hundred thousand dollars or something ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, something maybe that's exaggerating, but it's a lot, right? To for Disneyland yeah. as an adult. And that was one of the things you get is you get a chauffeur basically to take you around and you go front of line, every, everything. You have access to all the private rooms. Wow. And the girl who got to go around with us was so excited to take us. Because she'd and never I, done it. Because she's never done it. And she'd <sighs> worked there for like six years. Uh, yeah. So it's like really common that you could work there for a long time and not even see all of Disneyland because they keep it so, you know. I'm, I'm just going to say this, and I know I'm going to piss off a lot of people, but if you're an adult... And you go to Disneyland by yourself. Oh, don't say it. You pissed my sister off, bro. Uh, my sister's a huge... Fine. I took her for her 30th that's birthday. Cool. That's cool. I she like wanted. her. She's cool. What but she wanted weird. to do was Disneyland. I and know, I, that's I, weird. Hey, in her defense, that's weird. it was actually... A, I had a really good time. I thought, you know what? Like, it's... there's Yeah, there, but would you do it as a man? Like, just you and Justin go to Disneyland and... Maybe Justin. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, Justin's a lot of fun. You yeah. guys are weird. Yeah, we yeah, probably yeah. do mushrooms. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that, that would have, Get what kicked a, out. What a crazy yeah. place to do yeah. psychedelics. <laughs> Disneyland? That'd be Just terrifying. Don't do teacups. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes <laughs> me sick. Up. I don't do spinny stuff at all. Our next caller is Tiffany from Canada. Hi, Tiffany. How can we help you? Hi. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. What's going on? So, um, first of all, I've been listening to you since I think you started, and I love your podcast. So, thank you. Wow, that's um, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've been around with you guys for a long time. So, um, my question is, I'm a landscape gardener. So, I work out, I, I'm definitely type A, and I work out year-round except eight months of the year. I'm pretty heavy in labor for work, and I just feel like... I get the body that I want in the winter and then it's like it starts going backwards during my busy season, whether it's stress or I'm doing much. And I just don't, it happens to me almost every year and I don't know how to kind of get out of this circle that I'm in. I have a, I have a good, good idea why I'm assuming if you're taking that much activity uh, and you're also training, you probably just need to cut back on the volume on the of training that you're yeah. doing and feed yourself more. And what happens in the winter is it probably naturally happens, right? You work, you work less, you're indoors a little more. So you're not moving around as much. You're not, you're not, it, the intensity is not there because the labor is not there. You probably even have Recover some com better. comfort foods or yeah. eat, eat, a, eat a little more in the winter and your body's thanking you for it. And then you go to grind mode in work, work time. 
and naturally just all the the labor movement maybe even too who stress. knows if you get enough calorie yeah stress like so can you can you explain it uh like what a work day looks like when you're busy it says here that you're a gardener so you're physical you're outside what does that look like in a day so in the spring when things kind of like when my body gets shocked from me going back to work I'm dragging heavy tarps all day and I'm lifting heavy barrels of like, you know, debris and stuff like that. So my spring is definitely my hardest part of the season. And then again, in the fall, when our leaves fall, uh, fall cleanup is hard on me as well, but I'm moving, you know, 10 to 30,000 steps a day. I'm, you know, I'm weeding, I'm digging, I'm planting. So I'm very active that way. And I do take about a month off in the spring from the gym, but then it's my passion. And I feel like it just turns into all I do is work if I don't go to the gym. So I don't know how to like keep my results that I got all winter too. Like, do I not go to the gym for eight months of the year? I would miss that. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah. Yeah, it's less about not going to the gym at all and the intensity and the amount of volume you're probably doing. So when you do go back to the gym, uh, what is like a gym week look like for you? What do you, how do you typically train? So I would say I start out about three times a week and I just, I don't go as long because I know that I'm now adding yet another stress onto my plate. So I'll go in and I'll train, like I love shoulders. So I'll train shoulders twice a week and then I'll do a little bit of legs and then a little bit of everything else. But I try not to heavy load because I know that I'm like squatting all day and I'm deadlifting all day for work. So I try to do more like a leg press or different things that maybe don't put as much on like my back and and my core okay. um, and i then i slowly you know add a little bit more and a little bit more you're probably on, where you're on the right track i agree you're on the right track tiffany look at it this way okay you plan i'm sure you plan on exercising for the rest of your life your really? workout your workouts need to improve the quality of your life so when the context of your life changes or the circumstances change the workouts have to change otherwise your life is your workouts which if that's what you want, then we can do that. And then you can become a trainer, live in a gym, quit your job. And now that's what you do. But if, if, if that's not what you want to do and you want to have this amazing life and you like exercising because it improves things, you have to modify your workouts. What it's probably going to look like is one day a week of strength training or map 15 or really easy, full range of motion, recuperative type workouts where you're not in there to train. You're in there to feel better. Now here's the the kicker. You'll get better results this way. Like you're going to get better results if you train in this way. You should feel more energy and better from your workouts, not less, okay? I like MAPS 15 for her too. MAPS 15 in season would be amazing. Yeah. Literally, it's like a 15-20 minute workout every day yeah. and that would probably be ideal during the season and you'll get better results. You'll see strength, muscle and and, and yeah, fat be loss. muscle preserving for sure. We we also didn't talk about what what might be happening also nutritionally. So, how do you think your eating habits change from winter to uh in, you know, work season? Um, I would definitely say I eat less all winter. I eat I'm pretty intuitive eater. I don't, uh, like I, I definitely hit my protein targets. Mm -hmm. Uh, I carnivore probably, uh, cause I love eating protein. Um, so I definitely have enough protein. Um, and then I would say I'm probably more on the higher carbohydrate. So I eat a lot of plantain and oats and rice and, and definitely, uh, whole foods that way. Okay. Um, but I think what happens is in the spring, I, I start to actually lean out a little bit more and then I totally go the other way because my body's like, what the heck is yeah. going on? Yep. And then I start nickel and diming my diet because I'm scared because I like being lean and I'm maybe not eating as much as maybe I would if I was listening to my body a bit more. Yeah. Okay. So here's, here's what I want you to do. Your winter's fine. Your training and diet seems like you're fine. When you get into the season, either cut your training down to once a week or do something like MAPS 15, and I want you to add a meal. That's yeah. all. Don't yeah. worry about tracking all that stuff because you, you do it intuitively. Sounds like you're making good choices. I would add an extra meal to your day, and that's how I would eat during the work season. And I think that'll cover your bases right there. And Because what's happening now is you're going into it, and because you're dramatically increasing your activity, not changing your workouts too much, your body's rebounding. So you're getting cravings and, uh oh, now I'm overtrained. And then you go in the opposite direction versus what I'm saying, which is you're going in and you're prepared. 
So you just add a meal, make it a three, 400 calorie meal, and then, uh, cut your, cut your training, your, your strength training way down. And I think you'll, 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 it'll be a smooth transition if you do it that way. So either maps anabolic one day a week or maps 15, either yeah. one of those I think yep. would work. Perfect. Totally. Do you have okay. either one of those or both of those by yep. chance? Yes, I do. Okay. Awesome. Mm, cool. I mean, you're and you know, I did start adding in meditation because I am a stress cadet and I was noticing that things that don't normally bother me were kind of getting to me this year. I was feeling like a bit of a chicken with my head cut off because I have staff and I have clients and I have all these people that, you know, have questions all day long. I feel like sometimes I have like a toddler, you know, because it's answering question after question after question. And so I was feeling really maxed this year. Mm. This was the first year that I felt like I was overwhelmed and I was more tired than usual. So yeah. um, I am trying to like do more, put more in the, the good bucket, but it's tough for me because I do like control and I do like to train and, and I'm always worried that I'm going to go backwards, but I end up going backwards because I do too much. Yeah, it's the but, illusion of control. Yeah. Move it in the other direction, Tiffany. You, you're still modifying things. You're just doing it the right way. That's all. It's not, you're not <laughs> giving up. In other words, it's not like you're, giving up on something that's better for you. you're actually moving in the right direction you sound pretty self-aware too i mean i think you're and i think most of the things that you're doing you're you're doing the right things i don't think you're far off we're tweaking and you look like you're in incredible shape so we're we are like nitpicking right now as far as especially if you feel good i mean if you feel good you're just kind of like hey i wish i could keep my gains from winter here's some s slight adjustments that I think could yeah, I think adding the meal and, and modifying the training the way we said that and, would be, that would do it. And then maybe one more thing to consider if you haven't done this anytime recently, like recent as in the last year or more, uh, is actually running like a bulk for a little bit. I don't know when, when it suits you in your life. Like, obviously I wouldn't do that. Add to that on top of everything else you might have going on. But when there's a time or a season in your life where it's like, Hey, you know, I haven't yeah. really nourish. Yeah. Tried to like, you know, book, pump my calories up higher than what I normally do and, and really push the weight in the gym, like maybe run a, a small cycle of a, of, of an intentional bulk. If you haven't already. I definitely avoid that at all costs. Oh, so oh, that then, Oh, okay. Well, Adam okay. hit the nail on the head. Okay. Well then this might be also what we're missing then this. I mean, if you have, if you kind of have, okay, now we can get a little bit deeper into this stuff. So if you, if part of what's going on right now is you have this fear of eating too many calories because you're going to put on body fat. And so you're always at maintenance or in a cut and you also have high stress and you have this season where you bump cut. And part of what you might be feeling yeah, is your reaction strong because of that. Yeah. Sure. That you're, you're paring down muscle and your body's going into survival mode. And it's really because it's not recovering. It's not being fed properly. And maybe what you do need to do is run a nice bulk. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now, looking at you, you you're not flexibility. You're not going to get fat. L literally, or put on a ton of weight. But. Add a meal. Do yeah. eat what you eat now. Eat an extra meal, and that that'll that'll do it for you. You know, when I like, I'm 42 this year, and when I was leading up to, I'm going to say 30, I was the girl with the biggest cooler, and I eat all of the food, and I didn't ever, you know, um, nickel and dime my diet, and I did the same job, and I was active, and I feel like. I've, I loved health and fitness podcast, but almost to a fault because then I start second guessing, am I eating too much? Yeah. And I slowly, and I was lean, like my whole, you know, in my twenties, I was around the same weight, but as I've gotten older, I've gotten scared to eat all the calories. No, you're fine. We need a bulk. Yeah. You're I, fine. If you, were, if you were my client, we would go on a bulk right totally. now. That's what we would do so right now. Yeah. I would say it's, let's, and let's, so let's bulk. When to stop? When to stop? Um, I, w I would want to get you strong. So this is what I, this is what I want to do. Uh, well, well, hold I on a second. What do you think is going to happen? Do you think you're going to like just gain 15 pounds of body fat overnight? What's the fear? Um, so I have hypothyroidism and I did cause that from overtraining, I believe. And so when my thyroid stopped working, I did gain a bunch of weight really rapidly. Sure. And back before I knew as not that I know all of the things, but I know a lot more now, obviously, about thyroid and about stress. And so it took me four years to get that weight off in a healthy way. And so I am scared because I've been in that place where, you know, I was gaining 10 pounds in a week. And like that's terrifying for someone who is very rigid about their diet and rigid sure. about exercise. So I'm always scared to go back to that 
feeling like the weight's on and I don't know how to get it off. Yeah, that's not going to happen this yeah. time. Yeah. That's not going to happen. And that, by the way, that's reasonable to be nervous. Of if course. You're putting 10 pounds on a week. I, I would be scared. You had, a, I mean, you had some serious hormone issues, yeah, which yeah. I'm assuming now are remedied through medication. Yeah. It's yeah. been about 12 years. I've had to like really like take a look at, you know, how I thought of myself. I think I was probably just driving my body into the ground. Yeah. And so I've done mental work. I've had to do a lot of physical work and like I have, I'm way better, but I still have that part of me that's, um, Hunter, I mean, that like we're getting somewhere now. Now yeah. I feel like I know what's going on even more. So like you, you obviously, that would be traumatic, right? To be piling on 10 pounds every week and consider yourself you a healthy person. It. And so you've still got that in the back of your head and you got to get rid of that. And, and honestly, part of getting rid of that would be, let's try and go on a bulk and together I'm going to be with you. So I'm going to have Doug put you in the forum. So we're there for support because what is going to be challenging here is nothing to do with the, the amount of calories. It's going to be the psychological piece. It's mm -hmm. going to be you not fucking with yourself and freaking out because, you know, you initially put on a little bit of water weight and, you know, the scale goes up a couple of pounds and you freaking out and then reversing the other direction because you think it's going to happen again. So uh, this is an area where I, I would be communicating with you on a, on a pretty regular basis so obviously it, every day if you were my client because I'd want to I would want to talk you off the ledge every day that it's okay we will stay the course it's gonna be fine like don't worry we're not gonna put 30 pounds on like you're gonna be fine yeah and Tiffany it's it's literally with when, what I'm saying I, I I'm pretty sure you you eat regularly in the sense that you know what you eat for breakfast lunch and dinner it's probably not just random okay literally just just this is your bulk okay add an extra meal a small meal that's all with what you normally eat and don't worry about it. Just add an extra okay. meal. Boom. That's your bulk right there. Okay. Okay. And you're just going to feel better is what's going to happen. You're going to feel stronger. Okay. Yep. Thank you guys very much. You got well, it. I'm going to put you in the forum. I want you to stay in touch with us, Tiffany. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. You got it. All right. I like the countertop that was in front of that, that green was cool, one. Yeah. That was really nice. Was, she, uh, uh, yeah, I'm glad you said that, Adam, because that really got to the kind of root uh, of what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, she just obviously, and I think she's aware of this, she's just running too hard, not eating enough. Yeah. And everything she's feeling is, is a result of that. Yeah. No, I mean, first of all, she is in incredible shape already. So I was like, man, we're really like splitting hairs here. She looks yeah. great. She's in good shape. Like, yeah, what's but then going it came on? Out, right? Yeah. But then when I was like, hey, how long has it been since you've ran a bulk? It's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. 10 12 years is <laughs> oh okay yeah yeah no you definitely uh could uh, and that's just it or, is, is, that's fourteen thousand steps a laborious job like that and training is just too much yep. her, her bodies and her body is not responding the way it should now this is like this is like one of the hardest parts about what we do because mm -hmm. we're virtual and we don't have this person as a client right. because this is a like I'm talking to you every day type of deal. Where it's just like, how you doing today, Tiffany? What did you, right. did you get that extra meal in? And, right. and then like, how do you feel? Oh, I don't. And then she expresses simple advice, but not easy. Yeah, exactly. Like then she's expressing, oh my god, I noticed the scale went up, or I feel this. And then you can talk. It's okay. Don't worry. We're fine. You're doing good. You know what I'm saying? You just have to have that conversation. So I hope. She trusts us and the advice. She does do the bulk. She does stick with it. I know she asked us a time frame. Do it at least, Tiffany, for six to eight weeks. You can yeah. afford to Build do that. Build it back up so you can get yes. that flexibility. Yes. Our next caller is Drew from Oregon. Drew, what's up, man? How can we help you? How are we doing? Good. Good deal. Uh, first, just want to say thanks for, for having me on. I've listened to you guys for, for quite a while throughout uh, some of the education process. Kind of feel like I learned as much of you guys as, as school. <laughs> um, um, just, you know, took a job not long ago after graduating in June. Um, first of all, just wanted to say, you know, you guys kind of put that job on the radar. Uh, training seniors at, a, at a, an independent living facility. and um, A lot of the information I got from you guys in terms of what it's like to train that demographic wouldn't have been on my map uh, and I leave this job more days than not being like, do, do I really get paid for this? So that's awesome. Uh, that, Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. But uh, That's awesome. The, the school and science thing, I get really excited about it. Um, main question is just how to navigate over explaining some of the science or getting too into the weeds and detail 
uh, versus, you know, some, some of the residents just want to show up, kind of do what they're told and get moving, which is great. But I think the why is every bit as important as what we do. It's, it's very important, but, uh, remember, well, let me ask you this. Do you, is, why do you do what you do? Is it because you like helping these people or just because you want to teach them about the science behind what they're doing? Oh, it's, it's helping the people. Yeah. Uh, for sure. I, you know, I've gotten a couple 90 year olds that tell me they move around their house better than they can walk X amount longer than before. Uh, it's more gratifying than I would have thought. Um, but I geek out. I, I love the science behind it. I love the little, you know, technique, little details um, that not everybody does, and they don't need to. Yeah, no, um, you don't need to commute. I mean, unless they're into it um, and they find it fast. I used to have a client who was in his 80s. He was retired. Um, he was a retired anesthesiologist, and he loved, you know, the why, uh, the science behind what we were doing. So I, th those are the conversations I had with him. But what all the other you know, and I'm generalizing, right? But all the other advanced age clients that I trained, uh, there was two things that they valued through coming to my facility. One was obviously the fitness that I provided, the the ability to improve their mobility, their strength, their stability, their independence. The other thing that they valued was the companionship. A lot of these people, you know, their grandkids and kids don't visit them on a regular basis. They're either on their own or with assisted living. And they love to come in and just talk with me. And, you know, it's, you know, if you want to be effective, you want to provide a great experience, not necessarily educating them. I mean, a lot of them don't care about the why. They just like that it feels good and it works. And they love to come see Drew and he's a good kid. And, oh, I can't wait to talk to Drew. And what's happening at home, Drew? And you getting married soon? And they'll ask you these kind of questions. And then that's, that's what it's all about. Now, if you, if you want to scratch that itch where you get to geek out on stuff, um, you might need to find another outlet like forums on social media, um, or groups where you could talk to other fanatics like yourself. But if you really want to be effective, what you don't want to do is, is, you know, always, always remember the experience that you're trying to provide them and it's for them. It's not necessarily for you. Um, and, and I will say this, okay, here's the other side of it. You'll find tremendous value out of the wisdom that you'll get from some of these people. And, you know, a lot of them will have nothing to do with, you know, the, the field that you work in, but rather things that you're, you still haven't learned because you're a young man and they've lived a lot of life. Drew, I'm going to, I'm going to share something with you that is, is going to come from a place of love, but it's going to feel like I'm probably attacking you. So in my career, most of what I did was train trainers and I had the opportunity to work with a lot of PhDs, master degrees, brilliant, brilliant minds. And when trainers struggle with this, and I'd ask that same question, Sally, what's our desired outcome? Do we want to truly help these people? Of course, they'd say yes. They'd say, but when you feel the need to do that, it comes from a place of insecurity, of feeling like I need to prove to everybody how smart I am versus really trying to help this person. This is no different than my insecurity around money. So for a long time, when I started to come up from being a poor kid and I became successful, I'd find myself in these rooms. And as soon as we start talking to people, I felt the need to tell everybody my bankroll and how successful I was. And that's coming from a place of insecurity. Who do I, none of these people do I have to prove that to? What is that doing for building a relationship? So that feeling that I'd have to do that is, is coming from an insecure place. My PhDs and masters that worked for me for a long time, it's the same thing too, is they had some deep rooted insecurity about being the smartest person in the room or being educated or intelligent. And so they get into these places where they have an opportunity to teach and then they would over teach. And I'd be constantly telling them, it's like, it's so great that you're this intelligent. It's like, you're one of my favorite best trainers that I have here as far as knowing your shit but you're talking to some kid or some lady who doesn't give a shit about the science. And if our goal, if we agree that my goal and your goal is to truly help these people, then you have to recognize you're allowing yourself to get in the way of that by over-talking and over-speaking. Yeah, usually this is a challenge, by the way, with grad with new graduates always do this. Mm. And, and I think it's because you just came out of school. You're like an evangelist at that point. Yeah, and you really want to, like, like, this is what I know. There's two things. One, you enjoy talking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then two, what Adam's saying, which is whether you're aware of it or not, this is very common with new trainers and coaches, is you want to validate your value. That's and right. so this is what I know, and this is what the body does, and here's what's happening to your humerus, and it's internally rotated, and here's why your scapula hurts, and all this other stuff. But if you want, if that's, you really enjoy talking about this stuff, yeah. 
talk to people who like to hear about that and, we'll, yeah, and start, you'll get way more value. Yeah, start videotaping yourself doing that and start producing content like uh, you know turn that into something that you know somebody else like a, a potential trainer could you know reap the benefit from in terms of you breaking down all the nuance and you know examples of clients that you've helped uh, and how you've been able to do that meticulously through us- utilizing these methods and um, yeah, it, it, there's nothing wrong with being passionate about this stuff. And, and it's just, yeah, I, I catch myself, like if I learn some new concept like that, like bringing it right back to my clients and oh, get all excited to, to educate them. Uh, when in fact, um, you know, I've learned over the years to kind of, you know, uh, use that and shuttle that elsewhere. And then also to like uh, apply it uh, almost in a sneaky way. So it's, it, it shows up in their programming, but it's not, I'm not overwhelming. You want to be, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with being excited and passionate and learning something new and wanting to give that information. Listen, right. I was the same way too. Okay. So that that's totally okay. But just understand how you're communicating. And if the desired outcome, if you truly believe in your heart is to help that kid or to help that person, <laughs> then getting them to uh, adopt whatever it is you're teaching it is so much more important than them knowing that you know how many layers this goes deep and all the And, and they the won't technical. even remember that if yeah. they don't care anyway. They won't. It's yeah. like you're, you're just talking to the wall. That's right. It's, it's a waste <laughs> of time. That's right. And yeah. so just just remember that as you do that, that if, you want, if that's the desired outcome, then getting them to adhere to it. And by the way, when you hack into this at a guy with, that has the intelligence and has the level that you do, it's a superpower. It's like you have the intelligence now to talk to doctors and talk to very intelligent people. And so you can have that conversation when it's needed and you'll impress them. But then you have the ability to connect to people who actually feel insecure about that level of intelligence that aren't going to ignore you. Because what you don't even know what happens is sometimes when someone is talking that highlight, if you are if you hear someone, you're like, I understand nothing this guy is saying, you shut down. You shut down and you, but you, yep. but you're, you're too uh, embarrassed to admit that you don't understand what you're saying. So they just sit there and like nod their head. Meanwhile, they're getting, or, or worse, they're bored. And yeah. now you've created a, a crappy experience and they don't yeah, want to do it. Same difference, right? You're not, yeah. you're not breaking through is what, you know, it is. And, and a lot of times it's ourself getting in the way of that. And, mm-hmm. and totally. you can still be passionate and excited, but then get just as a passion excited as connecting to that person who doesn't understand at that level. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, you guys are spot on. Uh, I've that thought has kind of crept in my head definitely at times. You know, the talking to the wall. Um, you know, I, I do my the way my mind works. It's you know I need to know the why in a lot of things, and I've known that that's not how everybody clicks. The majority don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so you know, and wanting to be effective, like you guys have said, it's. That's it. Mm-hmm. Drew, if you were, if you, if, Drew, Drew, if you were my client, I would get deep into the science because you like it. And that's probably going to be very effective for you. Uh, mm-hmm. But most people are not like that. But if you were my client, I, I had clients like you yeah. and I would, we would go as far and as deep as they wanted. And it was really effective. But I'm going to tell you, most of these advanced age people who are living uh, in these assisted living situations, uh, ask them about, uh, their marriage, uh, ask them about the kids that they raised and where they grew up and how has the world changed? And what do you think about raising kids? And you're going to get so much out of that. It's not, I can't even tell you how much I got out of doing that. And then for them, they're like, they're going to love seeing you. Uh, Cause a lot of them, they want, they don't just want to move better and feel better. They, and maybe they don't even realize it, but that companionship and that connection dramatically improves their health and they, and they, they want it and you'll see they'll show up they'll fight over seeing you and they're going to want to show up even more because of that and I, I will say part of what i love about the job that i've gotten is they schedule that time in i i get to connect with these i went to crater lake with them yesterday oh great there's nice. it's i i'm like psyched about this gig uh it's in the classes we're going over some exercise that type of thing but um, I you know, would echo what you're saying in the connection in the community. That's been every bit as special as getting to geek out on my stuff. That's awesome. You're going to, um, you're going to kill it, Drew. Yeah. I, yeah. That's a great I space. Do think, I do agree with you. Don't drown them. And, and I, I've made classes boring in that way. I've made them fun for me. Yeah. And that's, that's what it's about. Nope. So. Be effective. Super common, bro. Yeah. Just so you know, super common, but you're, you're, you're going to do great. The fact that you care and you want to get about better you is everything. Yeah. 
Any any suggestions on turn that shit off? In my head? <laughs> uh, I mean, that's the reason why I went the direction I went with the advice is because if it is something that like me, my insecurity with the money thing, it's something that I had to work on internally. It's not like there's not the words. It's not like, oh, I was I was missing the words or I need to say something differently as much as I needed to work internally on that insecurity. I felt that I needed to prove to people. And so if you have that, that's where to go. Go go work on and on that. At first, you're, you're spot on. It was a lot of justification of like, I, I promise I earned this job. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah, that. You don't need to prove they've, that. Well, especially they've, they've already that, accepted please, you. And, and, yeah. and by yeah. the way, that of course, man, you're with a bunch of seniors, older people that have been through life, and probably some of them oh, are yeah. really smart and intelligent and successful and all these things like that. And so here comes this young guy fresh out of college, and you got it, you know. No, nah, they let love me, you. Let I me show you. Let me show you how smart I am. So that, but that's a place. Of, they, they, they don't. You know what they're thinking? They're thinking. Look at this young man. Uh, look at the, the place. Oh, I can't wait to do what he's doing, and I and I can't wait to talk to him about what he's going to go through in life. That's what they're thinking. So yeah. that, that those are the conversations you need to have with them. Yep. Yeah. All right. I agree. You no. got it. Right on, Drew. Thanks, Drew. Good, good way to redirect focus. I appreciate it, guys. No problem. All right, man. That's it. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, I. I loved it so much because I would ask them and they Just loved it. Wisdom. Oh, around, right? oh my God. Yeah. It's, you know, I got a, I got a two year old and this happens and you know, what do you think about that? And oh, yeah. what was it Lots like? Business advice I used to get all the time. It was amazing. Oh, what was it like when you first moved to the area? And I, this woman would told me what the area was like and what real estate was like. And I was like, oh my God, it was, it was so amazing. And they show up and then we would work out while having these incredible conversations. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are those occasional clients that want to know, all those details, but they're rare. It's rare. Most clients could give a shit. They, yeah. You just got to be effective and, and help them adopt the behaviors. And a lot of people don't care about, you know, how the, the, the patella glides over the femur and whatever. They don't give a shit. It's like, yeah. okay, oh, my knee hurts because of this. Cool. Show me what to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad he didn't get insulted by that. Sometimes that's a hard one for me to have because mm -hmm. it, you, I tell you what, you tell the PhD that, especially coming from my position where you're more, more red than I am. And I'm telling you, you're insecure. Yeah. That fucking stinks sometimes for a lot of these people, but that's the truth. That's what that is. That's that you're, you're getting in your own way because you feel this need that you need to prove to yourself to these people. And I get it because I have my own insecurities, my own issues, and but you, it's internal work. It's not like the words. It's not, I, you have to, you have to work on. Funny story too. I never forget. I had this uh, surgeon that I trained. He was just really crusty old, and we ended up becoming great friends. His wife hired me and she told me, she warned me. She said, so-and-so is, he's crusty. He's and, a bit of a barn. And cool. he's going to be, yeah, he's going to be whatever jerk. And this, you know, but he's a nice guy. Trust me, the whole deal. And so I talked to him normal and I did exercise with him. And I'll never forget, he wanted to test my knowledge. And I don't remember what he said exactly, <laughs> but he said something very technical and medical. And I answered back very nonchalant. And I remember his face, like he looked at me and he said, how did you know that? And I said, well, you think I, how do you think I got to do what I'm doing? Yeah. And then that was it. I earned his respect, but it wasn't me asserting myself because well, that would have come across. And totally let me different. tell you that. And they, exactly, especially with another intelligent person, then it turns into a competition, pissing competition no. that you normally eventually will lose. And so, and that by the way, is one of the most beautiful things and attractive qualities that you can find in another person is talk to somebody and you think you uh, you uh, you uh, assume that they're not that intelligent, and then as you start to pull layers back or dig yeah, deeper, yeah. you realize like, oh shit, this motherfucker knows what he's talking about. Like that's so impressive. Versus the kid or the person who leads with, I'm the, it's just like the money thing. Like it's you know what's totally. really you ever powerful? meet somebody and you don't even know they're super rich. That's and right. And you get to like, and them. then you start asking them questions, and, and you find like, out, oh and, then, and then it's impressive. Versus the guy who says, I did this and yeah. I did Look that. My it's like, yeah, then everybody yeah. turn is turned off by that that character. Versus if you were asking me those questions and then i was like oh yeah by the way i've done this and i've done that and then you're like oh shit yeah. and then and now you're more receptive to hear I it had, and to i had a climbing one i had yeah. a client that drove a, a, a truck with 200 something thousand miles beat up truck or whatever he'd show up and i train him and after a year he invited me over for lunch and i yeah. went to his house and it was the biggest house i'd ever seen it was a mansion and i respected him so much because he i never I had no idea i just knew who's this nice guy that worked with me and hired me and it was and so it was totally that experience Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free fitness and health guides. They're free and they're awesome. You can also find us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump to Stefano. And Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam.